Ask any adult, and they'll tell you things were a lot different in their day. Back then, a kid was lucky to have one or two toys. But today, we have more cool stuff than we could ever play with in just one lifetime. Yeah, I know. It's a great time to be alive, isn't it? Problem is, sometimes the more we have, the more we want. Like this kid named Dominic. He wanted it all. And since his family owned the Hunter Toy Company, he pretty much did have it all. But as the saying goes, he who has everything appreciates nothing. It was his 16th birthday, and little did Dominic realize his life was about to get interesting. Next Bluminator 3000. Card from Duncan. Gee, thanks. I wanted the X Bluminator 4000. <gasps> Junk it! Junk it! Ooh. Junk it! Read the list, people. <laughs> Is that too much to ask? Next! Oh, wow! Just what I need. A dusty old doll. Is this somebody's idea of a sick joke? <gasps> Junk it! I said junk it, or you'll be the next thing on the scrap heap. Card! Happy birthday, Dominic. Happy hunting. Now it's your turn. What's that mean? They didn't even have the guts to sign it. All right, who's the comedian, huh? Come on! Step up! Okay then, fine! You're all, ooh, like I don't know, dismissed? Looks like the joke's on you! Happy birthday, son. You mean crappy birthday. I'm, I'm sorry I had to miss your party, but, you know, we've been so busy working on the new toy launch. Woohoo! Level six! Here I come! Did you get any interesting gifts? This HDTV is okay, but the rest was crapola. Next year, I'm making everybody bring cash. Dominic, we need to have a serious talk. You're 16. It's time to start thinking about your future. You'll be taking over the Hunter Toy Company one day, and... Uh, yes. No, no, our, our European projections are solid. It's in the Far East that we're having the... No, 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 you're, you're, you're not hearing me. Uh, yes, go ahead. Hey, Dad, take it in the hall. I'm trying to bust a new level here. We, we, we'll, we'll talk tomorrow. Ha! Eat plasma, space freak! Ha ha ha! Funny how one person's garbage might be another's treasure. Maybe it's because the universe likes balance. You know the rule. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Hopefully that means for every Dominic Escudo in this world, there's a Crandall crud up. Hey now, what's a beautiful doll like you doing in a dump like this? <laughs> Sorry, corny joke. Look at you, hand carved. Workmanship is amazing. Hey, Crudda! Quit garbage picking and get back to work. Break's over. That's Angelo, my boss. He's really a sweetheart. Like a lot of people, Crandall had to work a crummy job just to get by. Unlike a lot of people, he was okay with it. He was even okay with Angelo.
Welcome to Castle Crudup. Just make yourself at home. This was the start of a very interesting friendship. And some even more interesting nightmares. No! 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 The seat, Rathburn, the seat! Well, they say some things never change. And I guess that goes for some people, too. But every once in a while, change happens. Not exactly the fast track to the Fortune 500, but hey, you do what you gotta do, right? Hey! I'm paying you to wash them dishes, not talk to them! Hey, what's this? Whoa! Easy! That's a precious work of art you're mauling. What? You making dolls now, Picasso? <laughs> well, I wish I had this kind of skill. See how the artist worked with the grain here? There's such attention to detail. Somebody really put their heart and soul into this little guy. If it don't do dishes or my floors, kid, I ain't interested. A million dishwashers on this lousy planet, and I hire the one who plays with dolls. Crud up! I thought I told you to fix this lousy, no good, stinking door! It's driving me bananas! You should see him on a bad day. Hey, what gives? You're not paid to park, you're paid to drive! Cheap junk. Use mine. It costs twice what you make in a month. Wipe it. Wipe it! Well, don't just stand there, Rathburn. Go get some help, man. And bring me back a double caramel latte while you're at it. If you think Dominic was having a bad day, where do you see how things were going at head office? Mr. Scudo was checking out the sales figures for their newest product. He'd invested millions in the RoboSphere, hoping it would bring in billions. We're... we're ruined. We... we had product testing. It, 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 it was a big hit with boys and girls. Every demographic. Even their pets loved RoboSphere. It doesn't make sense. What do you think? It symbolizes the battle of good over Angelo. Well, what's up? A break isn't over for another five minutes. You like it? I call that one Phoenix Rising. Oh, yeah? Well, I call it a doorstop. <laughs> hey, I just figured out what this junk is good for. <laughs> Everyone's a critic. Three hours, Rathburn, and to top it off, you come back with a cold caramel latte. My old man will hear about this. You might as well start packing. <gasps> what are you doing? The present. Uh, where's the birthday present I gave you? What? That, w that wooden doll. The hunter. You gave me that? Gee, thanks, Dad. I love you, too. Where is he? I don't know. I guess I threw it out with the rest of the junk. Junk? Junk? The hunter is the symbol of our family, our heritage. Okay, okay, so I'm sorry. I'll buy another one. There is no other! Don't you realize? Of course you don't. All you care about is yourself. Oh, I've tried. I've tried to tell you the story so many times, but you would never listen. Too bad. 
because it's a great story. The hunter had been in the Escudo family for 150 years. He was carved by the skilled hands of Dominic's great-great-great-grandfather Antonio. Antonio Escudo took great pride in his work and loved every toy he made. But the hunter was his pride and joy. It was so beautiful, so perfect in every detail, that word of Antonio's talent spread far and wide. Soon customers were flocking to his tiny shop. Many wanted to buy the hunter. Some offered enormous sums. But Antonio couldn't bear to part with his most cherished creation. They say he even talked to it, carve them than eat them. as if it were a lie. <laughs> Some said he was mad. I'm you, you're me. But still, his business prospered. Just before he died, he gave his son a very special gift. Antonio's son brought the hunter to the new world. And there, under its watchful eye, the hunter toy company grew. And so did the Escudo family fortune. The hunter was passed on from one generation to the next, along with a reminder to always remember old Antonio's dying words. Look after him, and he will look after you. And if you don't look after him, the old family curse will look after you. Look after him, and he will look after you. Last words of Antonio Escudo, founder of the Hunter Toy Dynasty. But I wonder, I mean, I'm thinking maybe that old Antonio really said was, look after him, or else. We have to find him. It'll be buried somewhere in the town dump by now. Which is where we'll soon be living if we don't find the Hunter. You're losing it, Dad. Get a grip. Ugh. He has to be here somewhere. What about gloves? Don't we have servants to do this sort of thing? No! It's time you learn something about responsibility. We have to find him. They say things are always darkest just before the dawn. And things were finally beginning to look brighter. <laughs> For Crandall, that is. Hey, lady! What's the big idea? Oh, it's marvelous. I must have it. No way! Get your own doorstop! It's not a doorstop. Well, of course it isn't. It's a remarkable work of art. You really think so? <laughs> you gotta be joking! I never joke about art. Yeah? Well, maybe I don't know much about art, but I know a good doorstop when I see one. Hoity Art Gallery. Eloise Hoity Proprietor? I have quite an eye for up-and-coming new talent. Yeah, I know. You run the hippest gallery in town. I don't suppose you know the artist who created that wonderful piece. Crandall Crudup, at your service. Head dishwasher, floor maintenance specialist, and artist in residence. Is this one of them hidden camera gags? Okay, where's the camera? In the provolone? I don't believe this. All because of some stupid old doll. <laughs> it's hopeless. I've only been telling you that all night! <laughs> We're doomed. <laughs> doomed. <gasps> hey!
what about me? If he wasn't my father, I'd fire his butt. First, a long hot shower. Then, a bubble bath. Then, a steam. Then, into the whirlpool. And I... Ooh, oof. Man, the gardener's really been slacking off. Remind me to fire his butt, too. Huh? Boy, look after the hunter, and he will look after you. These were my words, but you have shown him disrespect, and this shall be your fate. No, no, I'm, 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 I'm dreaming. Ah! Find him and bring him back to me before it is too late. <gasps> ah! <laughs> Randall, you have a gift. You obviously poured your heart and soul into your work. <gasps> Did you hear that? I have a gift. <laughs> Give me that! It's mine! No way! I found him. Only because I threw it out! You're gonna break him. So let go or it's matchsticks! Hey! What's going on out here? Ow! Ha! Ha! Ah, artists lead such dramatic lives. Oh, man. What's with this fog? Okay? And did he hurt you? Give it back, you thief! Security! Rathburn! He's come home. From that day on, the Hunter Toy Company was back on track. In fact, the Robosphere is now their biggest seller. I couldn't have turned the company around without you, son. Thanks, uh, Dad. Adopting Crandall was a great idea. Mr. Scudo can relax, knowing that when he retires, the Hunter Toy Company will be in good hands. And having an older brother will be a good influence on Dominic. Crandall even got his little bro a part-time job, so he can learn to appreciate the joys of working for a living. Ah! Don't forget your gloves. It's amazing how toys have changed through the years. To cave kids, this was more than just a rock. It was a ball, an action figure, a teddy bear. But as humans evolved, so did our toys. Yeah, if there's one thing we're good at, it's going overboard.
Maybe it's time to develop an all-in-one super toy. Something that could be anything you want it to be. New from MoCo. Imagination not included. Decision was never made. The serum works. Severe traumatic internal damage healed and closed up instantly. And all because of the research of a brilliant entomologist. Me. And some stupid worthless bugs. Now just have to get the Huh? Probably the cleaners. Well, no. where was I? Strange. We all know it's just light projected through a moving piece of film, right? But it doesn't seem to matter. <laughs> Filmmakers call it the willing suspension of disbelief, which is a fancy way of saying people will believe what they want to believe. A movie director can use this to entertain an audience, but others can put it to more sinister uses. Friends, I feel your pain. Yes, for I, Luther Bosco, was once one of you. I did not always live in a beautiful mansion or fly my own personal helicopter. You ask me, Luther, how did you do it? How did you become so fabulously wealthy, so dazzlingly attractive and zit-free, so marvelously self-assured? Luther, what is your secret? Friends, it's easy. I'll show you how you can do it too. The Luther way. Luther! 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 That's a nasty double chin you've got there, kid. I do? Forget the chins. Get a load of that fat gut. Uh, gee, <laughs> Mom always says I'm too thin. Of course you yearn to be thin, my friend. Who doesn't? Well, you're no more. Get skinny the Luther way. With his bee light as a butterfly, eat like a bear plant. No dieting required. What about all them unsightly pimples? Huh? Not a problem. Luther's pimple blaster plan will show you how to blast those ugly zits away today. No personal hygiene required. Uh, thanks, but I'm not sure I can afford all of... Of course you can't, you overweight pimple face loser. That's why you want Luther's 12 volume It's Easy to Get Rich Like Me plan. Oh, ah! And all this is yours for ten easy monthly installments of nine ninety nine ninety nine. Gee, I never even knew I needed all this stuff. Uh, thanks. So has my nephew learned how to become a salesman the Luther way? Yeah, boss. We just showed the dope the ropes. Never mind, kid. I'll deduct it from your first paycheck. Mine is our commission. All right. It's springtime, and the saps are running. Let's get out there and lutherize this town. I'll show you... Did you see the bit where the doc's eyeball corkscrewed out like an onion? <laughs> but other than that, the special effects were pretty lame. Which is why you spent the whole movie screaming in terror. Like I was saying, kids are more sophisticated nowadays. We don't fall for the same cheap stunts our parents did. Right, Mo? Right. Easy money. We like to fall for a whole new set of cheap stunts. Why work for a living? Yes, you can be popular. It's all here in Luther's Make Friends Without Meeting Anyone program. No social skills required. Yes. You know it's true, because you've seen him on TV. Uh, yes. You can shed those extra pounds the Uncle Lu um, I mean, the Luther way. Look! It's the Luther Mobile! It's easy! Oh, oh. Still flipping burgers for cash? Mowing the lawn so mommy and daddy will fork over your allowance? Don't be a dope, you dopes! Why waste time earning money? It's pathetic what some people will believe. 
Where's Hitch? Get rich quick! The Luther way! Luther! 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 Hey! But I can be rich! For 10 easy payments of $9.99.99! Oh! No! Oh, let me go! I make a really good rich guy. You could be destroying my whole future, you know. We're confident you'll manage that all by yourself. Well, I'm going for it. Luther Bosco says it's easy. As easy as... Oh. As easy as falling on your face? Interesting. I wonder what... Whoa! Wow! Look at that! It's beautiful. And look inside, do you see that? I don't see anything. I see it too. A triple hot fudge sundae. Big enough to slide down on a toboggan. I see a better world where everyone lives in peace and harmony, teachers are helpful, and no one watches wrestling. I don't see anything. You guys all right? Whoa. What was that? A trick of the light? Who cares? Let's hit the ice cream shop. I need a gigantic hot fudge sundae. Stat! It heard me. Now that's weird. Hey, hey, buddy. Don't spare on the hot fudge. A growing boy needs his protein. Come on, pour it on. That's it. Keep it flowing. There are a lot more important issues in this world than your bizarre obsession with hot fudge. Still dreaming of a world without wrestling? Hmm. Talk about bizarre obsessions. Whatever this is, it's old. Ah. Wow. Wow. Incredible! Look at Hey! Get back here! Ooh. I don't think Uncle Luther's gonna like this. Well, it might be old, but it sure buffs up real nice. Ooh. It's simple human nature. I mean, we all see what we want to see, right? They do say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But what happens when beauty is in the palm of your hands? And not just your own beauty. Whoa. But everyone else's too. I see me with a girlfriend. No, it's me driving a convertible. No, it's me. And look at my new do. I'm all that and more. What are you grinning at? Hey, look! I needed money, and I just found twenty dollars! My pantyhose are loose! I think I just dropped ten pounds! I'm not shy anymore. And I really do have a girlfriend! It's a miracle! It's magic! No, really. It's just a trick of the light. This thing is... I don't know, an old doorknob or something. See? Yeah! All hail the doorknob. Doorknob, 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 doorknob. Door They're joking, right? You'd like to think so, but knowing human nature, I doubt it. Door I wanted knob. a sundae, and it sent this ice cream truck. Doorknob, doorknob, door He's joking. We want to look into the magic doorknob. Yeah, yeah. We'll pay. We'll pay. You take credit cards? Yeah. Let's get out of here. The keeper of the doorknob is leaving! Maybe we should get out of here faster! Come back, doorknob! Wait for us! I don't believe it! I've got videos, CDs, books, I'm on TV! And you're telling me some weasel is fleecing my pigeons with nothing but an old doorknob? Magic doorknob. Whatever! I guess everybody's looking for something they can believe in. And sometimes the more unbelievable it is, the more willing they are to believe it. Ignore them. They'll get bored and go home. Uh, don't think so. They're setting up a tent village in the azaleas. Oh, man. Not Mom's azaleas. Show us the magic doorknob. We must gaze into its greatness. Doorknob, doorknob, doorknob. This is crazy. Fine. You want this thing? You can have it! No, don't! It's a riot! 
And I don't mean the fun kind. This is exactly how it started at my cousin Charmaine's wedding. Of course she was tossing a bouquet, not an old doorknob. I wonder, could a doorknob turn people into a bunch of mindless zombies? <sighs> Time for a little crowd control, oh keeper of the magic doorknob. <sighs> All right. Everybody chill! Crowd control or mind control? Sit! Sweet! Tell him to lie down. No, 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 no. Roll over. <laughs> okay, everybody follow me! Oh, man. That's no fun. So that's the punk who thinks he can horn in on my turf. He wants to play hardball. We'll play it the loser way. Follow that kid. There's a story about a wise king named Canute who wanted to prove to his followers that he really wasn't as all-powerful as they thought. He brought everyone to the ocean to watch as he commanded the tide not to come in. Of course, the tide came in as usual, and his people learned a valuable lesson. Okay, so it's not exactly a trip to the seashore, but then Canute wasn't exactly a doorknob. And now, I will demonstrate the true powers of the doorknob. It's time to crash this parade and bring those pigeons back home to the Luther Roost. Show us the legendary Who and Holler Swap Monster. <gasps> This is bogus! Bingo. It's a scam! That doorknob is just a, a, a doorknob or something. Exactly! Ugh. Thanks. You can all stop following me now, right? Well, thanks for coming. Bye. Um, Mo, you might want to check this out. Uh, it's probably just swamp gas. A monster! <gasps> It's okay, I'm insured, but I want to see this. You put me down. Whoa! Ugh. Cool. BB, I knew the swamp monster was just an urban myth. Just my luck. BB picked a day to look for down UFOs in Hoot and Holler Swamp. Ah, uh, quit your moping. You got a hundred mindless zombies ready to do your bidding. I mean, how sweet is that? These people are looking for something that's missing in their lives, and they found it in a doorknob. That's not sweet, Hitch. It's sad. The keeper needs a chili dog. OK, if you're so magical, find me a way out of this. Huh? We have come to claim the mystic orb of power. Never heard of it. You sure you got the right address? We seek that which you have so wrongfully called a magic doorknob. Mystic orb does have a better ring to it, doesn't it? Hey, I know you. You're... I am the rightful keeper of the mystic orb, and I have come to share its wondrous powers with all of you. Mystic orb! Mystic Orb! Yes, you will all get a chance to gaze into the Mystic Orb for just nine 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 ninety nine. And don't forget to ask about our special frequent gazer plan. That's the problem with mindless zombies, you know? Zero loyalty. I don't like the idea of handing that thing over to Luther Bosco. But it's just a doorknob. Isn't it? What if it isn't? He'll take over the world the Luther way! Mystic Orb! Mystic Orb! Mystic Orb! Mystic Orb! Mystic Orb! Mystic Orb! <gasps> Stop him! He tried to destroy the orb! He must be punished! The Mystic Orb demands revenge! 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 Oh, the sweet sound of suckers reaching for their wallets. 
We shall transform this unbeliever into a living sacrifice at sunrise. Sacrifice! Sacrifice! Oh, come on, you have to watch them. Quit whining. I have a three-story tall staircase to build. Um, don't try anything funny, okay? Oh, don't worry about us. I mean, we're nothing compared to the mind-numbing terror that could be stalking you. D -d 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 terror? <laughs> stalking me? Yeah, it's a real problem in old warehouses like this. They say the vampire eel of Ouija Falls is a master of camouflage. It can morph into any shape it pleases. Who knows how many unlucky victims have sat down to lunch, only to end up being lunch instead. You never know where it's hiding. There's only one tiny clue that it's nearby. The telltale smell of liver and onions. Oh, liver and onions? That's what I've been smelling all night. Oh. Hey. All right. One day I'll find out why my breath always smells like that. Showtime! Tough crowd! It's like a cross between the Roman Colosseum and a mosh pit. And my cousin Charmaine's wedding. Ugh. Welcome to the Temple of the Mystic Orb. Whoa! It's amazing what you TV guys can do with some styrofoam and duct tape. And today only, we are offering three for the price of one. Three for one! We're the hottest ticket in town! It's the score of the century. It's easy. I give them what they want, and they give me what I want, which is everything but their pocket light. Sacrifice! 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 He's crazy. I'm too young to be sacrificed. It's OK, guys. He's doing this the Luther way. He's not really going to hurt us. You're learning, kid. Showmanship is what it's all about. Don't forget greed. Oh, Mystic Orb, let us get this show up on the road to sacrifice. Wow! wow. <laughs> Do you guys see that? <laughs> yes! Yes! I'm a fraud. I'm not worthy. I cannot control the orb. Refund! 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 No thanks. I'd rather be a living sacrifice. I'll take that. Okay, everybody do the wave and chant. Hitch is a stud. It will only do the bidding of the chosen one. Speak to us, master. Hmm. Maybe instead of giving them what they want, I can give them what they need. I want you all to please get a life. Get a life. That makes sense. Yeah, I should have thought of that before. Let's try it. I gotta phone my mom and tell her I love her. I'm gonna try helping people for a change instead of scamming them. See you later, Uncle Luther. A life. Yes, I need to get a life. So, uh, think I could borrow that doorknob for a day or two? Mm. Ooh! Was it the willing suspension of disbelief? The power of suggestion? Mass hysteria? Or could this be more than just a pretty hunk of junk? Nah, I don't think so. Oh, Who, who's there? Huh. 
We all have something we believe in that gives our lives hope and meaning. The problem is, sometimes people go totally overboard. In fact, I've noticed there's this crazy cult taking over the whole school. Kids have lost their ability to think for themselves. They believe every word of their leaders, who convince them to fork over incredible piles of money. I know what you're thinking. Not me. I never get sucked in like them. Don't be too sure. You might already be one of them, without even realizing it. And it's a lot weirder than the cult of the magic doorknob or UFOs or psychic readings. Ask yourself this scary question. Do you believe in designer genes? We've all heard that old saying, there's more to a book than just the cover. And it's true. It's surprising what you'll find if you're willing to look beneath the surface. For example, beneath the surface of the average earthworm, there's a lot of worm guts. Clock me, Mo. I'm going for the worm dissection world record. Go! Woohoo! You two aren't usually this enthusiastic about science class. No, but we are enthusiastic about scalpels and guts. Time! Uh-oh, heads up, guys. Timothy is locked and loaded. Timothy Upchuck. Check him out at your own risk. You feeling okay? Room 23 to custodian. Room 23 to custodian. The PA is down. Go get Mr. Sister. Tell him it's a code green. Peg Mr. Cistern as a country western fan. Mr. Cistern! Go away! There's a code green in room 23! How many involved? Pretty much the entire class. You better bring two bags of sawdust. Sawdust? Sawdust ain't gonna put a dent in the code green. We're gonna need the pink stuff. Get a move on! Darn these kids and their hair-trigger gag reflex. Can't anybody hold down their breakfast anymore? What a thankless job. Are you kidding? I'll be thanking him every time I step into science class and don't get a soaker. But why does he do it? There must be at least three million better jobs out there than mopping up after Upchuck three times a week. Do you guys know he's into world beat music? Get out! I'd have pegged him as a country western fan. Oh, I just thought he was into puke. There's always more to people than meets the eye, right? It might be interesting to find out what makes Mr. Cistern tick. Okay. According to school employment records, he's worked here for... 30 years? This is so totally wild! Well, what's so wild? What's so wild about that? In 30 years, he hasn't taken one single day off. Not even summer vacation? Nope. He must be incredibly dedicated to his job. What else? Previous jobs? Driver's license? Tax numbers? No, nope, and nothing. Not even a home address or phone number. 
Puke? I'm not sure what he's hiding, but I have a good idea where. They don't allow food in the library, you know. This isn't food. It's cafeteria meatloaf on a Kaiser. Perfect. We'll need a diversion. Custodian to boys washing. Code red. Darn fool kids think the toilets are garbage disposal. What are they teaching them nowadays? Whoa! The poor guy lives down here? I like what he's done with the place. Skillful use of accents. Weird. He went to a lot of work just to create wall space for an old travel poster. Well, we are talking about a guy whose last vacation was over 30 years ago. His souvenirs probably mean a lot to him. We're also talking about a guy who's hiding something. A door. Those summer school classes are really paying off. Thanks. A tunnel? You're amazing! There's that smell again. Ew, rotten eggs. Pickled rotten eggs. Oh, awesome. Think it is? It's a big toe. What? No pickled eggs. Oh man, I'm starving. That's one little piggy that didn't make it to market. Cafeteria meatloaf. So we meet again. Well, you may be tough, but you're no match for. Pink stuff! There's much more to our mild-mannered school custodian than meets the eye. You mean meets the toe. <laughs> He's a doctor. How can you tell? He has a PhD. Why would a doctor be living in a boiler room cleaning up upchuck and unclogging toilets for a living? Obviously, something happened to end his career. Something so disgraceful, he's been trying to keep it a secret for the past 30 years. The world of academia can be a cutthroat business. There are all kinds of stories of jealousy, revenge, hatred, and even murder. But why keep the toe? You said his souvenirs mean a lot to him. A souvenir? That's insane! What makes you so sure he's insane? He keeps a big toe in a pickle jar. Exactly. Now, keeping a big toe in your shirt pocket, that would be insane. What the blue blusher and Sam Hill are you kids doing in here? Insane killers are very touchy about their personal space. Give me, give me my toe. Hitch! Ha! Go on, Mo! No! Hey, way to go! <laughs> way to go, way to go, way to go! Darn fool kids! I think we lost him. Whoa! Whoa. Yeah. Come on! have no idea who you're dealing with. Oh, yes, we do, and we can't let you get away with it, Dr. Cistern. <sighs> Guess I always knew my past would catch up to me one day. <sighs> you crazy kids gave me quite a scare. And you tried to steam us like a basket of clams. So we're even. It was for your own good. Look, could you just give me my toe? Not until you tell us whose it is. I already told you, it's mine! Can't you hear? Must be that loud music you're always listening to. I mean, whose toe was it before you put it in a pickle jar? Ew! Gross! 
happy now? I'm happy Timothy Upchuck isn't here. But why do you keep your toe in a pickle jar, in an underground shrine? All right, all right, you already know too much. I might as well tell you the rest. Hey, uh, Doc. <clears throat> when you're done with that story, can you have a look at this rash I got going here? Keep your shirt on. I'm not that kind of doctor. He has a PhD in archaeology. Aren't you? You might not believe it to see me now, but I was a real go-getter back in my younger days. I was young and fearless. Nothing could keep me from the thrill of making new discoveries. Yeah, I had more close calls than a long-tailed cat in a room full of rockers. <laughs> Yeah, the closer the shave, the more I wanted an even bigger challenge. And then one day, I was poking around the island of Kabuma Lava Lava when I came across the secret entrance to an underground temple. in honor of the fearsome lava demon, Polly put on a kettle. Oh, sure, there were plenty of curses and warnings, but that mumbo-jumbo had never stopped me before. First thing I noticed was the smell. The acrid, burning smell of pure evil. Like pickled rotten eggs? Yeah, that's the one. This temple hadn't exactly been built to honor Polly put on a kettle. Ah! It had been built to lock him up. At first, I figured it was just another close shave. <gasps> Little did I know, when I left Kabuma Lava Lava, I had me a hitchhiker. Maybe I should have stayed home that night, but <laughs> it isn't every day a fella gets knighted. But I found that my foot had a mind of its own. Whoa! It isn't every day somebody boots the queen, either. <laughs> she was not amused. Anyway, I had to take odd jobs to survive, but Polly put on a kettle had other ideas. He wanted to unleash his evil on humanity. spells that keep him at bay and well you know the rest you became the custodian of evil yep and I also became custodian of this possessed big toe um that's what I meant oh I thought you were talking about that upchuck kid <laughs> good one mr. cistern <laughs> no oops good one hitch yeah it isn't every day somebody unleashes an evil lava demon Hallo omo exo um omni lava lava la a 
Maximano Oblitum. If I find it, I am not picking it up. I will. It, it's escaped! Follow that toe jam! Come back and fight like a toe! Well, he ain't gonna fight like a toe. Polly Padana Kettle's gonna fight like the evil demon that he is. What you call it is really gonna blow his top. Not yet. We can stop him. Can't we? Maybe I could have stopped him in my younger days, but I'm just a high school custodian now. I've gone soft. Soft? You've single-handedly held back a tide of Timothy Upchuck Upchuck. What's a lava demon compared to that? You've gone head-to-head -head with cafeteria meatloaf, armed only with a toilet plunger, and won. Right. What's a volcano except the world's biggest, hottest, clogged toilet? Only when this baby old flows, it's taking out the whole town. Hmm, crazy kids and your youthful optimism. You just might be onto something. You have to multiply the volume by about two million. No shut off valve. You kids feel like going on a field trip? As long as we don't go to the museum. I'm allergic to mummies. Pink stop along clog anything. I just hope we have enough. I hope it's environmentally friendly. Well, it can't be any more unfriendly than that. Aren't you coming? I got me a volcano to unclog. Whoa! Pink stuff would do the trick. And it leaves everything smelling springtime fresh. <sighs> ah. It looks like you've unclogged your first volcano and your last toilet. Whoa, you think they'll fire him for trashing a school bus? That's harsh. I mean, now that the big toe is gone, there's nothing stopping Mr. Cistern from going back to being a world famous archaeologist. Right, Dr. Cistern? <laughs> yeah, I think my exploring days are behind me. No more adventures. Now, I didn't say that. There's always that upchuck kid. Besides, if old Polly put on a kettle ever rears his ugly toenail around here again, I want to be waiting for him.
There's more to a book than just the cover, right? I mean, I like to think there's a bit of hero in all of us. Water. It's always right there at our fingertips. It's easy to forget that without it, we wouldn't be here. The ancient Romans built aqueducts to carry fresh water over incredible distances. But once they got water, it took a long time to figure out how to get rid of it. Fortunately, it was a time of heroes. We're still having the same old problems, and we still need our heroes. Without them, who knows how far our entire civilization could back up? Maybe all the way to the Dark Ages. Hannah Halston. Just another department store mannequin? Or a dangerous predator, patrolling her natural habitat, hoping to ambush another innocent victim? Mother Nature has equipped her with eagle eyes and a razor-sharp tongue. Once she catches a whiff of her intended prey, there is no escape. Mimi! Oh, Hannah! I'm so glad to see your face! Finally buying new clothes. Your whole wardrobe is so incredibly lame. Hi to you, too. While you're here, stop in at the hair fair salon for a new do. I mean, you've had a bad hair day going since the second grade. <laughs> and hitch. What? My hair? My shirt? My pants? <sighs> Those ratty sneaks are not cutting it. If you want to pull off the bling-bling look, you've got to wear the latest glow-in-the-dark UBU sports. Bling-bling? Any flaws in my ensemble? Actually, that retro 50 shirt is kind of stylin'. Is it vintage? Big Mart Red Light Special, 60% off. Ooh. Well, it's been a slice, but we really Whoa. have to go. No need to thank me. It's my duty to help the fashionably challenged. Hannah sure has a passion for fashion, especially dissing other people's. Yeah, no wonder she has no friends. Actually, she does have one very close friend. Her reflection. Ah! Hi, Hannah! Oh. Dodie? Stella? What happened? We were shopping and stopped to... Ask me for fashion advice? Say hi. I hope you've bought something that's not fuchsia. And Dodie, lose the stripes. You look like a candy cane. I like candy canes. Don't worry, girls. It's not too late. We'll return these ghastly mistakes and buy some real clothes. Look out! Watch it! <gasps> Hit my manicure! <sighs> Mom says come home right away. Rich Aunt Marion died. Oh, I'm so sorry for your loss. Are you okay, Hannah? No, I've broken a nail. Who's Aunt Marion? I don't know, but we gotta get home. There's gonna be a funeral and everything. I get to see a real live corpse. A funeral? Do you need to sit down? I need to buy a funeral ensemble. Funerals are a chance to pay your respects to the dearly departed, a time to comfort the grieving family. Or, if you're Hannah, they're the next best thing to a Paris runway. Oh, yeah! I look stunning in basic black. Oh, no! Don't take it so hard. It's not like we knew her. My shoes are scuffed! Ugh. Oh, gross! It touched a dead woman! Oh! That's as if I can feel her presence next to me. <gasps> Larry, show a little respect. Why can't you be more like Hannah? But she... Ow, Mom! 
while we're waiting for Hannah, perhaps you could tell us about Anne Marion. Yes, we hardly knew her. We'd get a Christmas card every year, but we never got to meet her in person. I'm afraid your aunt is as great a mystery to me as she is to you. We only corresponded via mail, so, uh... Here I am! In the very latest in a prey funeral wear, from Morticia Lamour! <clears throat> as I was saying, I never met your aunt in person. However, I can tell you that she was very wealthy. Oh, yeah! Show me the money! <laughs> <clears throat> she left all her money to various charitable organizations and educational institutions. Oh. The remainder of her estate is to be distributed amongst her next of kin as follows. What a rip-off! Thanks a bunch, Aunt Marion. I have the perfect place for it. Check it out, Hannah's having lunch with her best friend. You little sneak! Ah! I, I wasn't doing anything! Quit playing games with my mirror, twerp! What are you talking about? I didn't touch it! Just knock off the tricks or you're dead meat! Got it? Creep! Jerk! like Hannah's burning the midnight oil. Strange. It isn't like her to miss any beauty sleep. Come on, we better get out of range before she spots you wearing that. Ta-da! Feast your fashion-starved eyes on me, people. Today, I'm wearing an original design created especially for me by me. Inspired by the islands of the South Seas, this papaya-toned wrap and natural linen top caress the wearer like a warm tropical breeze. It's simply the very latest in casual chic. Bravo, Hannah! Great outfit! Yeah, awesome! I know. Stella, you can't be serious coming out in public in that purple top. You look like a bruise. Oh, well... I guess I'm just not as color-coordinated as you. <laughs> Who is? Dodie, what did I tell you about stripes? You look like a zebra. I like zebras. You girls should listen to Hannah. She's styling. What about us? Could you give us some tips? How about me? Does this color go with my what eyes? What kind of jeans are in? Should I let my hair Hannah, grow out? Hannah, Hannah like should Hannah. I wear...
Hey. Can I have your autograph? Will you stop my shoe? Can I buy that outfit from you? What should I wear? Uh, the blue sweater or Hannah, white? Should I be wearing the skirt? Hannah, do you like this on me? Does green go with beige? How much for those pants? Hannah! 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 I, I don't believe this. It's like they can't get dressed without Hannah's stamp of approval. Yeah, just proves that some people can't think for themselves, you know? Hey, are those the new glow in the dark UBU sports? Uh. You're busted, Hitch. You've joined the Fashion Zombie Legion. But, but look at all the cool outfits she's been wearing. And Hannah designs them oh, all herself. You know, she really knows her stuff. Stop following me! What's the point of advising you people anyway? You're all hopelessly tasteless. I guess that's the danger of leading the fashion parade. You have to keep moving or the elephants will trample you. is going on here? You've always had a B average, and now your highest grade is a D minus? Huh? Huh? What? You're flunking every course. I thought you've been staying up late doing schoolwork, but Larry tells me you've been sewing. <sighs> it's not easy being a fashion guru. It takes time to create all these fabulous outfits. You could always buy them at a clown store. <laughs> what do you know? Twerp. Creep. Jerk. Creep. Ugh. You're dead meat. I want to see these marks improve, young lady. But, Mom, I have a reputation to uphold. <sighs> a bit make it tomorrow I promise no! night's sleep I've had in weeks. Oh, no. I forgot to make a new outfit. Oh, well. I have about a zillion others where this came from. A new outfit. I don't have time to create a new outfit before school. Besides, I've only worn this once. No! At me! Make it! Easy for you to say the one working your fingers to the bone night after night. So give it a rest. Give me a rest. As if I need some stupid hunk of junk to tell me what to wear. No. There. Perfect. No. No. Ah! Stupid mirror. I've got better things to do than stare at it all day. <gasps> Quit it! What's the big idea? No, you have you... This outfit is so last week. But don't worry, I'll show you the latest styles. Make this one. It's all the rage in Paris this season. I'm hallucinating! You are, if you seriously think we're going out in public in those old rags. No! What are you doing? Isn't it obvious? I'm helping you. You don't want to be a fashion loser! I'm not! I have all the latest fashions! Oh. 
not so funny now, is it? Whoa, Hannah. Sporting a new look? Swanky. <sighs> Who'd have thought being fashionable would be such a workout? And not just physically. There's always a mental side to the equation, right? Here she comes. Today, she's wearing the very latest from La Dumpster Collection. <laughs> Shut up, dweeb. <gasps> it's your problem. Give it back. If there's one thing the general public loves more than a celebrity, it's a fallen celebrity. Can you believe we ever took fashion advice from her? Uh, hi, Hannah. How are you doing? We love your new outfit. It's much more practical than the stuff you used to wear. Do you think I can get it in stripes? Oh. Hannah, wait! <laughs> <laughs> You mean you used to be? I made you a fashion diva. You were fabulous. They worshipped you. But look at you now. Without me, you're nothing. Brother says she went crazy and ripped up all her clothes. She hasn't changed her outfit all week. Have you guys seen Hannah? You mean the human clearance sale? <laughs> <laughs> We're looking for her. Why? She's such a pain. Yeah, who needs her and her lame fashion advice? That's not what you were saying last week when Hannah was wearing all her own creations. You couldn't be your friend fast enough then. You were begging for her advice. Poor Hannah. I wish everyone would cut her some slack. Sure, she's obsessed with her looks, but that's probably because she has a low self-image. Yeah, under all that expensive makeup, she's not so bad. I kind of like her. Me too. <laughs> Even if she isn't into zebras and candy canes, at least she says what she means, right? I'm in here! Help me! Stop sniveling. If you had listened to me, we'd still be the fashion queen of Ouija Falls, and then the world. <laughs> now look at you. You're a fashion disaster. <laughs> Leave me alone. Hey, I thought I heard Hannah. We should find her. She looked really upset. Stella? Don't eat! Wait, I'm sorry! Sorry? For what? It's those two who are sorry. They're so pathetic. Stella and Dodie wear things they like. They don't need the latest fashions to feel good about themselves. They're not like you. That's right. They're losers! They're not losers. Stella and Dodie are my friends. Friends, we are not going to be friends with Miss Candy Cane and the Fuchsia Princess. You can't tell me what to do. I'm not letting you run my life. Not anymore. Get a grip, Hannah. Listen to me. No. Why do you have to cut other people down to feel good about yourself? Do you get a kick out of hurting their feelings? So what if you look great on the outside? It's what's on the inside that really counts. It's you who's the loser. You have no friends, but I do. Dodie? Stella? Wait up! Hannah, we...
We've been looking all over for you. That's great. I've been looking for you guys, too. So, you want to go shopping? No, thanks. Maybe we should go shoot some hoops. You know, since I'm dressed for it. <laughs> <laughs> Just like a two-for-one sale, Hannah has traded in her only friend for two real ones. Who knows what you might see if you take a long, hard look in the mirror. Hey, check out this cruel and unusual device. They called it the corset. It wasn't used to force confessions from hardened criminals. It was used to force the body into an hourglass figure. But the only thing more painful than getting into this thing was wearing it. As they say in the fashion biz, no pain, no gain. Anyway, it's easy to look back and have a laugh at the way people used to dress. Think about it. Nobody can predict where fashions will go from here. But there is one thing you can be sure of. One day, somebody will be looking back at you. Pets. There are friends, our companions, even members of our family. But in the master-pet relationship, people get all the power. I mean, you can go to the pet store and choose which sort of pet you want, right? But pets don't get to pick their owners. Food and water every day. Uh, oh, oh, and a clean cage, too. Don't forget. <laughs> hey, hey, you forgot your food. The really unlucky ones get chosen by Amul Borneo. Emo Winslow Borneo, what have I always told you? Always wash my hands after I flush? Pets deserve respect. Huh. Gee, I thought this one was dead too, Mom. Boy, what a relief, huh? Clean the bowl, change the water, and give the poor thing something to eat now. Oh, yeah, sure. It's at the top of my to-do list. Hey, Mom, I was thinking... Maybe I could get something more exciting than a stupid old guppy, like a piranha, or a Siamese fighting fish, or a dolphin. Can I, Mom? Can I? I'll take care of it, I promise. If you don't want the responsibility of looking after that guppy, fine. But you find it a good home, and not in the sewer. Until you show me you can look after the pets you do have, don't even think about getting any others. <laughs> have they been fed and watered? Yeah, sure. That was next on my list. Maybe I should dump you fuzzballs, too, while I'm at it. Now, where is that stupid... It's coming! It's coming! Yeah, Emu really was crummy to his pets. But at least they weren't totally defenseless. Not when Ouija Falls' most dedicated animal rights activist is on the case. You're getting rid of another pet? That's the sixth one this month. What's your problem? You want the guppy or not? <sighs> Here. A five? My ad says 100. <sighs> or, or best offer, we appreciate your business. Oh, hey, for an extra 10, I'll deliver it personally. No, oh, okay, why don't we just get it now? I can see you're in a rush. There's also some cool chinchillas for sale. Maybe I can interest you in a breeding pair. Check out page 83. Oh, I'm out of here. Chinchillas for cash? Hmm, how cool is that? Hey, Mo, can I interest you in a used turtle? Low mileage. Sorry, I'm broke. I'll take him. <laughs> Thought you might. I know you're trying to help, Mimi, but draining your college fund to rescue Emul's pets will only give him more money to feed his habit. I'm way ahead of you, Mo. Emul's like a pet junkie, right? 
And what's the one thing every addict needs? A career in Hollywood? A supplier. I'm gonna cut him off at the source. What do you mean I can't buy the bird? Add your name to hundreds of people who've already made their voices heard. Responsible pet owners boycott Ouija Falls Pet Store unless they make it an emo Borneo free zone. What do you think you're doing? Jigs up. Maybe you should collect hockey cards or bottle caps instead of living, breathing creatures. Maybe you should mind your own business. You haven't even begun to touch me, Valentine. Oh, no? Then where's the bird? Oh, that's right. They refuse to sell it to you. Too bad. It's over for you, Borneo! Whoa! Hey! What was that for? The question is, what's all this for? Hitch is now the proud owner of a pair of chinchillas. Really? Thanks for pitching in, Hitch. You get everything you need? Yeah. $364.43 should cover it. <laughs> well, be careful, Hitch. Those things multiply like crazy. Yeah, like crazy. <laughs> crazy catching. Great campaign, Mimi. A landslide victory. Thanks, Mo, but the victory really belongs to the animals. Now no more pets will have to suffer at the hands of Emil... Borneo? But... where? Let's just say Emil Borneo doesn't need the Ouija Falls pet store. I've got plenty of other sources. Huh? Ugh. Here, birdie, birdie, birdie. Ow! Oh, oh. It's a Malaysian biting tree finch. Thanks for the warning. Perfect for keeping no good do-gooders at bay. Oh, there ought to be a law. There is. It's called the law of supply and demand. There are no other listings for pet stores in Ouija Falls. No hits on Malaysian biting tree finch either. Maybe it's a rare species. So rare it doesn't exist. Emil must have bought it from an illegal pet broker. The exotic pet trade is a billion dollar underground business. We could be dealing with a worldwide trafficking ring like a Colombian drug cartel. Or a huge cola company. Whoa, this could get dangerous. Here's hoping. Falcon to Big Bird. Come in, Big Bird. What up, Big Bird? This is the last time you get to pick co-names, Falcon. Roger that, Big Bird. You forgot to say over. Any sign of uh, emo? Over. Negative. Just Mama Bird taking out the trash. Over. The eagle is taking flight. Huh? Over. Emo's leaving. Just get over here. Oh, man. He's on wheels. What do we do now? Check it out. Awesome. All right. Eagle is heading down fit. Over. Roger, Big Bird. Over. Falcon is on his whew, tail. Over. He's on the move, and he's got a Slurpee. So cold, so refreshing. Over. Whoa! Eagle, let's come to roost. Over. We know, we know. Huh? What do you got for me, Mr. Pong? <laughs> Mulvarian Rex Hamster.
from Bulgaria. Exotic, very rare. Give it up, Amul. We've got the place around it. You're busted, you freaky little animal, dude. Whoa. Oh, my spleen. You are selling defenseless animals to a known pet neglector. Just ignore Mr. Pong. They're nobody. Well, what have you got to say for yourself? Bulgarian Rex hamster. Seven dollar. Cash only. <laughs> Emo Borneo is number one customer. How can this guy make a living? He doesn't exactly have a lot in stock. And who'd want to buy such scruffy looking pets anyhow? I want to buy all of your pets, Mr. Pong. How much? Mm -mm. No sale. I'm a paying customer. Sorry, not right kind. No sale. What do you mean, not right kind? You mean because we're not irresponsible and abusive? Or because we won't keep quiet about your illegal dealings? Shop closed. You go away now. I am going to shut you down, Pong. Just watch me. She's one tough customer, but not so tough as Mr. Paul. <laughs> no hits from Ovarian Rex Hamster. Another pet that doesn't exist. Ugh, tell me about it. I tried to report him to every animal rights group and government agency in the book, but they all thought it was a crank call. Whoa, feeding time. I gotta get home to Rocky, Klaus, John Boy, Wilma, Ethel, Myrtle, Estevan, and Scout. Who? His chinchillas just had another litter. Aren't you running out of cage space? No, but I am running out of names. Lovely night for a moonlight cruise. Maybe you like flying tree iguana. Ten dollar, cash only. Sold! Needs food and water. Three times each day. You remember? Yeah, yeah, no probs. You understand? Yeah, sure, I got it. Why would he waste his breath? I got a funny feeling Mr. Pong already knows he won't look after it. This has to stop. It's time to set the animals free. Uh, Hitch! 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 Psychic pizza at your service, dude. I mean, ma'am, dude. I didn't order a pizza. We deliver before you order. It's our motto, you know? Some Emol dude was sending out some very heavy-duty pepperoni vibes. Emol's not home. No way. Better check in with ground control. Yo, thick crust? This is the big slice. The eagle, er, Emol dude is like totally gonzo. Like... Over. Ugh, what a pigsty! Talk about inhumane living conditions. This is impossible. There's not even any water or food. How can they be so... Healthy. It makes no sense. They should be on their last legs like all the others. Hmm. Light as a feather. He must be all fur. No, dude. Seriously, 55 minutes or it's totally free. But I don't like oh. pepperoni. Thick crust, a big slice. The order has been picked up. Over. Gotta go. Don't worry about the tip. Hey! What was he doing here? Did you order a, a psychic pizza? Ugh. You get the goods? Yeah, they're right here. Go! No way! You might want to check this out. Huh? I've heard of carrier pigeons returning to their masters, but this is like kamikaze carrier pigeons with a death wish. Did you say death wish? Uh, are you thinking field trip to the boneyard? You really are psychic pizza, dude. Only it's not the town cemetery. Oh, man. 
Ew! Something's been digging up all of Emol's dead pets. It was probably just a cat. Why would a cat dig up some dusty old bones? Besides, a cat would leave paw prints in the mud. Guess it was just my imagination. Uh, Mo! Oh, please tell me that's your imagination, too? One thing's for sure, it ain't no cat. Do you see anything? Please say no. No, I don't see anything. Then let's blow this popsicle stand. I have to get back to Eloise, Jerry, Shanika, Dwayne, and Erlene. Man, I need more cage space. You gotta separate them if you want to exercise a little crowd control, you know? Aw, but they're so cute and cuddly. Oh, yes, you are. They're gonna sell like furry hotcakes. Did you say sell? Uh, gee. <laughs> Did I? Hitch is raising chinchillas to get rich quick. Fast. Where'd you get an idea like that? Page 83. Emol told me about it. Hitch, the guys that run those ads turn the chinchillas into coats. Ah! No way! No one's turning little Vanna into a coat. Or Elvis. Or Skipper. Or Marianne. And especially not the professor. Or anybody. Nothing on flying tree iguanas. Big surprise. Where's he getting these non-existent pets? What I'd like to know is why those pets seem to be so devoted to Emil. Got any hits on that? Pets are strangely loyal to their masters, even ones that mistreat them. But it's more than that, Mo. It was almost like those animals were thriving on neglect. It isn't natural. It's supernatural. What are you staring at, bunch of dumb? What a happy, healthy crew. You're finally learning to be responsible for your pets. Can you lend me 3,000 bucks for an emerald tree boa? Mm hmm Clean up this pigsty of a room and then we'll talk. Stop staring or you're homeless. Now you're making me see things. Ah! Get away from me! Get your care and feeding sheet. You want to take very good care of these little guys. I mean, you don't want to be like a mule, right? Take them! Take them! I don't want them anymore! Sorry. No return. 
sales final. You can keep the money, I just... Don't you remember me, Emo Borneo? First name, Ping. Ping Pong. <gasps> now, you remember? Hmm? <laughs> Ping Pong? But I just, I flushed you when I was five. <laughs> yes, I remember. Too bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> What good will it do? I just can't sleep at night until I give this guy a piece of my mind. Looks like someone made a hasty getaway. He must have known Mimi was coming. Hmm. Haven't seen you here before. Nice. Pong skips town and leaves this poor little guy behind. Figures. Once a creep, always a creep. What do we name the little guy? Manny? Franz? Bubba? Why don't we name him... What a complex relationship we share with animals. If we're not wiping out a species somewhere in the world every single minute, we're domesticating them and teaching them to fetch our slippers. Yuck! And what's up with the doggy sweater? Don't they come with fur to keep them warm? I'm sure Mother Nature never meant for dogs to wear plaid. How would we like it if our dogs dressed us? We could call this hairstyle the Yorkie's Revenge. The cockapoo look was all the rage in the 70s. They called it fun fur. Grab your gear, mostly. Time to leave the worries of the modern world behind. <sighs> okay, I'm up. <sighs> some people are abducted by aliens in the middle of the night. And some of us get abducted by fishing fanatics. Read it again, son. Welcome in. Offers the ultimate in modern comfort. Our finely appointed guest cabins are fully equipped with... Oh, never mind that. Just get to the good part. Nestled on the shores of beautiful Lake Gimme Gimme Itchy Owie, home to the legendary Ol' Whopper. Ol' Whopper. This is what it's all about, son. Two men pitting our skills against the elements and a world record whopper of a fish! Sunrise already? Don't think so. May as well get out and stretch our legs. And more importantly, pump the locals for fishing info. <laughs> Here we go, son. One of the fringe benefits of our calling, the chance to talk shop, trade tips, bond in the company of men. <clears throat> so, um, what do you hear on the Weather Channel? Uh, think we'll get some rain? Hmm. Secret of types. Must be headed to a top secret hotspot. So, uh, how's the fishing in these parts? I hear up to Beaver Tail Point, the walleye's practically jumping into the boats. Where are you fellas headed? I ever hear of a little place called uh, Lake Gimme Gimme Itchy Owie? Gimme Gimme Itchy Owie? Going the wrong way, friend. But the map in the brochure says. I mean, turn back. You don't want to go up there. That lake is cursed. You go up there, you won't never come back. You better go home before it's too late. It's cursed. Cursed, I tell you. I 
think we may be onto something. The fishing in Lake Gimme Gimme Ichiawe must be fantastic. The locals are trying to scare us off so they can keep the lake to themselves. Don't worry about this curse business, Mosley. It's nothing but a tall tale. <laughs> Actually, that's what I was worried about. I knew it was too good to be. <gasps> Look out! Huh? <gasps> Thanks for stopping. <laughs> Folks around here call me Mountain Marge. Don't suppose you fellas are heading to the welcome in? We sure are. I always come out to the big road to show folks the way. It's lucky you did. We would have missed the turn. Mount Marge never lets a customer slip the hook. We hear Lake Gimme Gimme Itchy Owie is cursed. <laughs> Tall tales like that could be bad for business. <laughs> I guess the local fishermen don't want any competition for Old Whopper. Hope nobody's landed him yet. In the native legends, he is called Iya I Gachawa. Some say he's been living in the lake since the glaciers. No telling how old he is, but he ain't met his match yet. Well, he's about to meet Montgomery Moville. Welcome to Welcome In. Huh? huh? Cool! Looks like old Whopper isn't the only thing that's been here since the glaciers. This is what it's all about, son. The great outdoors. Ah. <sighs> Fresh air, the gentle sounds of... I'll take care of checking in if you want to get started. Thanks, son. I owe you one. Y'all might as well pack up and go on home. Old Whopper is as good as stuffed and mounted over my mantle. Ain't no fish ever breathed as a match for Big Wally. Ain't that right, Little Wally? Dang, Nabby, where is that boy? Little Wally! Little Wally! Get your butt over here. We're shoving off. Pronto! I was just about to suggest that. Breakfast is served! Yep. This bunch has got it bad. Got what? The big fish fever! <laughs> the ultimate in modern comfort? <laughs> well, I have to hand it to her. Mountain Marge really knows how to reel them in. You seem like a nice guy, so let me give y'all some friendly advice. Stay out of my way or you'll be doing your fishing from the bottom of this here lake. Whoa! Whoa! It'll take more than a big boat to outfish Montgomery Movale. You okay, Dad? I'm fine, son. Know how it doesn't come in a tackle box. Huh? <laughs> Looks like we got the luxury suite. Nice taxidermy. Whoa! Okay, so that one was pretty lifelike. <laughs> huh. 
Hello? Gone fishing? Or just gone? Ugh. Whatever came through here, it was even bigger than Big Wally's RV. Technology to with a whopper. The evening news, circa ten thousand BC. Wow, this is quite the archive of prehistory. What's this? Huh? Ah. Be free, my little friends. Swim for your lives. Be free. It's coming this way! Get your hook off of my old whopper! I got him! I got him! You can't get rid of me that easily. Say this for old Whopper. He's got a lot of fight in him for an old timer. Swim to the rocks now! Don't worry, I'm wearing my inflatable vest. Dad! <coughs> You're scaring him off! Wait there, I'll get a boat. It must have been old Whopper, and he's a monster. My gear! Don't forget my gear! You have to be careful. This thing is huge, and it's got attitude. That's what makes him such a worthy opponent. This will be the ultimate test of skill and cunning. <gasps> Whoa! Man versus nature, the oldest grudge match of all time. And so far, here on Lake Gimme Gimme Itchy Owie, the first round goes to Mother Nature. <laughs> time to check the archives. Whoa! Little Wally! Little Wally! Something that big has to have been around for a long, long time. The local natives must have had a few run-ins with it. And that's probably how the whole curse thing got started. Whoa! Ah! Yeah! Whoa! Ah! Jackpot! Whoa! Oh, man! Come on! Huh? Little Wally! 
Whoa! Definitely not a fish. Just keep swimming. Oh, man. Talk about the one that got away. Supper time! Supper time? Seems awfully late. Unless you're big and slimy with a really bad attitude. Dad. Uh-oh. Oh, you got the last boat. Come on, old whopper. Show me what you got. He's back. Oh. Fish on! Reel him in, boy! Reel him in! Uh, uh, I... Come to Papa! I warned you, this lake ain't big enough for the both of us. Oh. Smells blood. Our last father-son fishing trip! Wally is old whoppers. Whoa! 
Hang on. Ugh. That leech is about to get the mother of all Harper. Son, I hope you're not too disappointed that we didn't land the big one. Are you kidding? This trip makes the highlight real. Not every kid can claim his father was almost swallowed by a giant leech. Little Wally! Get your butt over here! You ain't heard the last of Big Wally. Same time next year, y'all be here! Wouldn't miss it. Prepare to be humiliated. Leeches are that size. Just think how big the fish must be. Do not worry about the fishermen that got away, my little ones. There are many more where they came from. Soon, you will all grow big and strong. I wonder who started this whole man versus nature grudge match anyway. When do we stop being a part of nature and start trying to stuff it and mount it over our fireplaces? I mean, let's face it, we're only at the top of the food chain thanks to an incredible stroke of luck. For the first few million years, it was no contest. We weren't even on the radar. Then along comes this huge comet, and wham! Talk about winning the lottery. But I really think it's time we stop gloating. Mother Nature isn't gonna throw in the towel that easily. Maybe she's just resting up for a rematch. Well, I've always said Ouija Falls is a real hot spot. And now that we're in the middle of a record-breaking heat wave, I guess I wasn't kidding. Oh. Sweet. Oh, bless the guy who invented AC. That goes double for the dude who invented ice cream. Welcome to Burger Genie, where your wish is my command. Hmm. Mango Mondo Madness. No, wait. Rockin' Nutty Nougat. No, 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 no. <sighs> The Sunday that lasts till Monday. Mm, triple Turbo Tangerine? I'll have a, a chocolate, chocolate shake. shake. Whoa, you guys are psychic. Dude, that's what you always get. I can't believe a guy who's gone toe to toe with werewolves is afraid to try a scoop of Rip Van Winkle Melon. Nothing wrong with consistency. One number one, no frills. Thanks. Besides, it's the only thing you can order without being forced to talk baby talk. One super de duper bingy bangy bongo bye bye with extra binky bits, please. Come on, Mo, live a little. Set your taste buds free. Forget it, Mimi. He'll still be chugging plain old chocolate shakes when we're their age. And he'll still be razzing me about it, right? Like you said, bro. Nothing wrong with consistency. You guys think we'll still be hanging out together 50 years from now? Sure. Only we'll have whiskers in our ears. Now there's something to look forward to. I wonder what the world will be like in 50 years. A global dictatorship where our rights and freedoms have been completely subjugated by alien overlords. Hey, Vivi. What's up? Sorry, Mo. That's classified. Top secret. My eyes only. <laughs> Did you find everything you needed over at Clutter Salvage? Yeah, I must have rooted through a ton of old... <gasps> ah, you've been spying on me! It's all this cat hair. Looks like you just pried yourself out of a hairball. You're good, Mo. So, what are you building this time? That is on a strictly need-to-know basis. I'd never forgive myself if I drew my best friend into this insidious web of horror and intrigue. You never saw me. 
Is it my imagination, or is he even more paranoid than usual today? Oh, he's off the scale. Yeah, this must be a good one. Let's check it out. Pass. I'm still picking gravel out of my scalp from the time the Beebster talked me into testing his anti-gravity generator. And I've barely made a dent in my Boomberry Blast. That's the beauty of a chocolate shake. Portability. Technically, you followed me. I got here first. But, but, how did you get past my perimeter defenses? I rang the doorbell and your mom let me in. I see I'll have to review security procedures with her. Again. Hey! Ha! So, what's under ah. the sheet? Sorry, Mo. If I remove this sheet, you will become hopelessly enmeshed in a tangled web of global conspiracy. While performing a routine hack of highly classified government websites, I discovered plans for a top-secret listening device which has been reverse-engineered from downed alien spacecraft. Codename Project Eavesdropper? Oh. But how did you... Found the site in your favorites folder. Whoa. Says here, this thing is some sort of alien communications device. That's right. I'll be able to foil their dastardly plot to take over the planet. So let me see. I must warn you. From this point on, your life will be in mortal danger. There is no turning back once you know too much. Behold. Project Eve's dropper. It kind of looks like one of those crystal radio sets my dad built when he was a kid. Let the end game begin. Oh. oh, this is it, Mo. Just listen to those strange alien vocalizations bristling with evil and menace. Well, that was Hank the oh. Yolen Cowpoke with Grandma got stomped on by a longhorn. Stay mm. tuned for more Golden Country Oldies right here on HICK FM. Oh. I don't know, BB. There's something off about this website. Only a four-character password? They're not even using 32-bit encryption. It all seems too easy. Ironic, isn't it? Their smug tendency to underestimate the intelligence of their Earthling opponents will lead to their ultimate downfall. Or it could be an internet hoax? Exactly what they want us to believe. Wise up, Mo. Uh, good advice, BB. I think I'll head home. Maybe I'll stop by Mrs. Blatsky's. She says her poodle is acting like a vampire. But call me if you need any backup, all right? Roger, Mo. Watch your back. And remember, to rest no one. Nothing wrong with consistency, right? secret code and expose the alien slime and their earthling collaborators.
blackout can't stop B.B. Boone. And it's dead in my sight. And neither will an undercover operative working in league with the alien horde. Little. Hey, who are you working for? I want names and I want them now. I'm willing to barter your freedom in exchange for the key to their secret code. I don't have time for this. Yeah! What? 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 Mo, it's me. Yes, I know exactly what time it is. It's time to save the free world as we know it. Thanks for coming, Mo. Are you kidding? Thanks for calling. What's with the slime? He was sent to destroy Project Eavesdropper before I could break their code. Actually, I was talking about this line. Hey! Baby? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Man, what's with all this... <gasps> Not this time. Hey! Uh... It's after me! It's after me! Whoa! What was that thing? Looked like a Type 7. Wise up, BB. Sevens don't have tentacles. Wise up? Who are you anyway? You can call me W2. <laughs> this is a fresh contact from a planet nine light years away, and they don't travel by spaceship. Ha! Well then, how did it get here? On a commuter train? They've developed a hyperspace transporter link. They can ride ultra-low radio frequencies. Project Eavesdropper. As I came here to destroy that infernal device, but one still got through. Thanks to you. Oh, I had it dead in my sights. Sorry about that. I thought it was BB you had a beat on. That's all right, Mo. Oh, so when Mo does it, it's all right. Good to see you, Mo. How'd you know my name? I bet he has files on everyone I've ever come in contact with. I'm under constant surveillance, Mo. I know too much. Correction, you don't know enough. You weren't stopping an alien invasion, you just helped start one. Ha! Project Eavesdropper is a communications device, not some crazy alien transporter. Exactly what they wanted you to believe. Yeah, right. Give me a break. Oh, I have to stop her before she finds a suitable nesting site. They're egg layers, 100,000 in a single clutch. Super fast incubators, too. If I don't stop her, we'll be overrun within a week. It will be the end of the free world as we know it. You sound pretty definite. Trust me. <gasps> Correction. Trust no one. For all we know, he could be one of them. We can't turn our backs on this guy for a minute, or he'll fry us! But if he wanted to fry you, he would have done it back in your room, right? Right. <gasps> Unless he wanted to fry the both of us! Remember, Mo, we both know too much! Goodbye, boys. <clears throat> what did I tell you? I mean, it's time for you two to go home. I work alone. No way, we can't go home now. It's for your own safety, Mo. She's 20 times stronger than a human being and impervious to conventional weapons. The only thing that can stop her in her tracks is this. What is that thing exactly? Wise up, Mo. It's obviously a molecular disruption device developed with the aid of highly advanced technology recovered from downed alien spacecraft. For once in his life, he's right. She's taken flight. She'll be looking for a dark nesting cavity, secluded near a supply of water. Luckily, it was the driest summer on record. Her choices will be limited. 
All right. You two check Hootenholler Swamp. I'll patrol Ouija River. Use this communicator to keep in touch. If you do find her, call for backup. Don't be a hero, all right? Hey, what about me? W2 sure knows a lot about this alien's traits and habits, doesn't he? Yeah, what a show off. But I thought he said this was a fresh contact. This way, Mo. We can take a shortcut to the swamp. The city maintains several top secret emergency overflows. Uh, that ought to keep him out of the way. I'm telling you, Mo, that man in black knows more than he's letting on. I don't like it. You're one to talk, mister. Need to know basis. That's different. I thought swamps went squish. Pretty weird, huh? Guess we can give W2 the all clear on this location. No! Yeah! He's rigged it to explode! Or at the very least, it's a tracking device meant to advise him of our every movement. He knew the swamp would be dried up, right? Yeah. He did say this was the driest summer on record. So why send us all the way out here? He obviously wants us out of the way. Exactly! Because we know too much! Or for our own safety. Wise up, Mo. We've been decoyed. He sent us here to allow the alien time to lay her eggs. The free world as we know it may very well be doomed. <laughs> nah, I'm sure he's got it all wrong. At least I sure hope so. If the Ouija Falls Power Authority ever finds out it was BB who caused this blackout, he'll be in a deep. Then again, if we don't find that alien, we'll all be in it with him. Face it, you've been duped. Me? I didn't build the alien a transporter doohickey. Ah, but it was you who trusted her human collaborator. Unfortunately, my sense of caution was momentarily dulled by your influence, thereby allowing the duo to slip my ever-tightening noose. What noose? And if I recall correctly, that collaborator saved your butt back there in the sewer. Exactly what he wanted us to believe. Now this is more like it. Prime alien larvae habitat. Baby, wait. <laughs> Looks like the jig is up for you and your alien friend. Now let's go give her a warm welcome to planet Earth! Uh, maybe I should stay here and keep an eye on our prisoner. Oh, sure, that's okay, Mo. We can't all be fearless. He is such a pain. He means well. You shouldn't be so hard on yourself. Gotcha! What gave me away? Same old mannerisms, figures of speech, attitude. The clincher was that scar on your forehead. I was there when you got it, remember? <laughs> the anti-gravity generator. Hitch is still razzing me about that one. Good to see you again, old buddy. I should have known you'd see through my disguise. I forgot how good you were at this sort of stuff. Were? Don't tell me I've lost my touch. Actually, you lost your head. Whoa! That's not something you misplaced by accident. How and, more importantly, when? Tonight, although for me it was exactly 50 years ago. After my machine brought the alien through, I called you for backup. We tracked her into the sewers, and then we got separated. <laughs> BB! It's after me! It's after me! You were always there when I needed you, Mo. Yeah. Uh. You really think you can do this? Wise up, Mo. I'm here, aren't I? I mean, change the course of history. You've still got a head on your shoulders, don't you? In the old timeline, it would be half digested by alien gastric juices by now. Yeah, but what if it's fate? Or destiny? Oh, it's too late to get all philosophical now. I've been working day and night for 50 years on a way to come back and set things right. What if you mess up the future? I've already done a good job of that. Yeah! Bibi! Whoa! Man, 
You think I'd be ready for him this time? It's a, it's a shot for me! Help! Hang on, Vivi. No! no. Stay back! Stay back! What have you done? What's it look like? I just saved the free world as we know it from invasion by an alien horde. What about Mo? He, he was trying to save me, and now he's... he's... Trust me. It could have been a lot worse. Trust you? I'm gonna... I'll... Hold still, you creep! <coughs> I really think you guys should try to get along. Mo! <gasps> You're okay! It's programmed not to disrupt human molecules. Is that an egg? Egg sac. The entire invasion force. Anyone care for an alien omelet? Make mine scramble. On second thought, why don't you do the honors? Good job, BB. Thanks. You too. What a beautiful spot. Stupid place to build a shopping mall. Oh well, as the saying goes, there's no place like home. Time travel shoes. That's awesome, BB. Hey, who was that guy? Sorry, BB. That's classified. Top secret. Strictly a need-to-know basis. What? Ah, oh, come on, Mo, give! Forget it, BB. You'll never be able to pry it out of me. Not for another, oh, uh, 50 years. Speaking of alien life forms, check this out. Just a few members of the Order Acarina, better known as mites and ticks. There are thousands of species, and they're everywhere. From the top of Mount Everest to the bottom of the oceans. Let's give it up for the Acarina family. In the house. Literally, in your house, right now. Millions of them. And they're on you. They're in your hair, your eyebrows. Some even hang out in your bed, where they feast on your dead skin. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. When you're sharing the planet with critters like this, who needs aliens from outer space? Then again, maybe the invasion has already happened. Take one father, an accomplished tuba player who comes from a long line of talented musicians. Add his teenage darling daughter, Matilda, a whiz on the accordion. She's sweet and kind and practices diligently three hours a day. And then add her twin brother, Rodney, a total slacker. Mix them all together and what do you got? Jealousy. Hello, Rodney. Oh, hello, son. Say, why don't you get out the old guitar and we can... Yeah, Ronnie knows who to blame for his troubles. Little Miss Perfect Pants. Daddy's little jewel. Rodney, why don't you get your guitar and join us? It's broken. Oh, it's not broken. It just needs to be tuned. Couldn't you learn just one tune? It saddens me to see such a rift between father and you. Yeah, right. You love it. You get all the attention. All I ever get is the look. It's just that he wishes you were more interested in music than comics and video games. You know how important music is in his life. Since when is that polka stuff music? <gasps> oh, I hope Father didn't hear that. I'll never be as good as you. You just want me to play so you'll look even better. Rodney, you know that's not true. You should start with something simple. See? It's easy. After a month of three hour-a-day practice sessions, you'll be ready to move on to even higher accomplishments. Rodney, is that... Oh, it's you, Matilda. I should have known. I'm giving Rodney a guitar lesson. Well, that's very noble of you, Pumpkin. Rodney is lucky to have such a considerate sister. That's very noble of you, Pumpkin. I knew it. 
You're just trying to score points with the old man. I'm trying to help you. Give me that. That's the spirit. All it takes is practice, practice, practice. Yeah, maybe I should learn how to play this thing. That'd show her. Excellent, Matilda. Your timing is flawless. You are so talented. Oh, hi, Rodney. I made it to Platoon Commander on Doomsday Drive to Planet X. Oh, that's wonderful. Platoon Commander, Father, isn't that something? Uh-huh. Very nice. Let's take it from the top, Pumpkin. And the one, and the two, and the... I knew you'd be impressed. Yep. The green-eyed monster has definitely got a hold on Rodney. They say music has charms to soothe the savage beast. There's no doubt music has mysterious effects on people. It can touch their souls. And that's how it was with Rodney. Just when he was feeling like the whole world was against him, he heard some sweet music. Yeah, baby, got some summer. Yeah, it's been a long, long while. He was filled with powerful feelings. Feelings of revenge. What's the matter, boy? Nothing. It's just... You're, uh... You play real sweet for a guy who's... Of no fixed address. <laughs> Can you teach me how to play like that? <laughs> Show me what you got. Uh, I'm not... I'm not very... I'll be the judge of that. Now play. <laughs> Kid, you got a fine touch. I do? But remember, you gotta suffer to play the blues. Oh, I've suffered plenty. Now you're talking my language. Blind Louis Z. Bonsoir at your service. But if you wanna play like me, you gotta want it bad. You gotta live it. You got to breathe it. You gotta want it so bad you can taste it in your bones. But most of all, you got to... Practice? Oh, no, none of that. Practice is boring. What you got to do is get me a coffee. I've never seen Rodney move that fast before. I guess that's the thing about jealousy. It's a great motivator. Take one aging musician named Blind Louis Z. Bonsoir. Supremely talented, but homeless and down on his luck. Add Rodney, itching to show up his perfect twin sister. <laughs> what do you got? I'm not sure. But it looks like Blind Louie has a personal assistant. There was nothing else I could do but jump out the window. Lucky I was only on the third floor. <laughs> yeah, that's life on the road for you. Never a dull moment. Man. It sounds like you've really been around. A rolling stone gathers no moss, boy. Which reminds me of the time I had a gig with Mick and the fellas over in England. Which reminds me of muffins. <sighs> okay, I'm going. Now are you gonna show me how to play a riff or something? When you ready, son. You gotta want it real bad. So bad you can taste it. And most of all, you gotta give me another coffee to wash down that muffin. Oh. Who there? Go, go, go check it out, boy. <laughs> it's okay, Louie. It's just a. Louie! Hey, Louie! Ah! Shh! It was just a cat. I'm allergic to felines. C come on, boy. It's time we was moving on. <laughs> 
in the middle of nowhere. Playing the blues ain't just about the adulation of the crowd. Sometimes a fella needs a little elbow room. So are you gonna show me a few licks now? You said you'd show me how to play. Oh, there, Rodney. What's your hurry? <laughs> you got a girl you want to impress, eh? <laughs> yeah. I want to knock her socks off. Well, we all want something. Now me, what I want is another cup of java. Oh yeah, we all want something. Everybody got a dream. Make mine a mocha java. Better not forget the cream. Get me a cup of java. Fetch me some muffins. What am I, butler? Rodney, you've got your guitar. Ooh, nothing gets past Daddy's perfect little angel, does it? Want me to help you practice? You might want to go shopping for some new socks. I'm about to knock yours off. Huh? Louie, here's your coffee. Shh, and you're late. I stopped off to get my guitar. You've been promising a lesson, remember? Hmm, so I did. Okay, here you go. <gasps> hey! Lesson number one, get yourself a decent axe. Lesson number two, don't forget some donuts to go with his coffee. Now get. He can get his own donuts from now on. What gives? Rodney. How could you be late for your own sister's surprise birthday party? It's Rodney's birthday too, Father. We're twins, remember? Oh, right. Uh, happy birthday, son. Happy birthday, Rodney. It's a strap for your guitar. I hope you like it. That's my girl. You're so thoughtful. I smell sticky buns. You promised you'd show me how to play. Now how about it? I'll give anything to play like you. Anything? I want to play so bad I can feel it in my bones. Just name your price. <laughs> <gasps> hey, wait up. going here you go son this is gonna wipe that perfect little smile off matilda's face how do i look fine kid mighty fine you, you got to look you got to touch and i gotta get gone but don't worry boy i'll be back Whoa! It's called the blues. I play them, and you're gonna be crying them. Yeah, Ronnie's getting good, really good. Funny thing is, Blind Louie never did give him a lesson. And another funny thing, his name isn't Blind Louis Z. Bonsoir. Arnold Keswick. According to the Musicians Union. Guess he just needed a cool stage name. Arnold Keswick just doesn't rock, you know? Hmm. BLZB. Interesting initials. Ever notice if you say them quickly, you get BLZB? Or maybe Beelzebub? What are you talking about? Ever heard of a guy named Niccolo Paganini? He was an amazingly gifted violinist who wowed audiences all across Europe.
He was like an early 1800s version of a mega rock star. They say he loved to party and hardly ever practiced. He could do things on the violin no one had ever heard before. So of course, everybody wondered how he could be so good. And the rumor was, he came by his otherworldly talents by making a pact with you know who. You mean you think Blind Louie made a deal with the dark side? Who knows? But if he did, the price would be his soul. Sweet! Well, it seems Rodney got just what he wanted. The question is, did he get more than he bargained for? How do you like that? Bravo, bravo! I knew you had it in you. That is some amazing playing, son. <laughs> but do you know any polkas? Polkas? Don't worry, Father. I will gladly show Rodney the intricacies of the polka musical form. You should count your blessings, Rodney, for having a wonderful sister like Matilda. Shall we get started? <gasps> hey, Rodney. Ah! Oh, it's you. Were you expecting someone else? N no, of course not. I, I mean, who would I be? I mean, say, Mo, you're up on this kind of thing. Actually, I'm more into hip hop. No, I, I mean, you know who. What I'm saying is, this is just a loner, right? If anybody sold their soul, it was Blind Louie. Arnold Casper. Whoever, just not me, right? I don't know. They say possession is nine tenths of the law. What did you say exactly? I said if he'd show me how to play like him, I'd give him anything. Anything? That's just what he said. Uh, hey, how would you like to play guitar? No, thanks. I like my soul. I think I'll keep it a little while longer. Ah! Huh? I've been looking all over for you. Please come home. Don't be sad about father. Give him some time. He's just not used to your loud rock and roll music. Oh, don't forget your guitar. Ah! What's wrong, Rodney? You seem troubled. The agents of darkness are on my tail. They're coming for me. I sold my soul to the dark side. What makes you think you're in league with you know who? I met an old blind guy with these creepy blue eyes. Oh, my! Did he reek of the sulfurous smell of fire and brimstone? Actually, he smelled like a wet poodle. But he was the best guitar player I've ever heard. And in exchange for your talents, he demanded your very soul? No. All he wanted was coffee and sticky buns. But when he gave me this guitar, it came with an IOU. For one soul. Oh, I'm sure you've just imagined the entire episode. Then how did I get so good on guitar? Simple. You finally applied yourself, worked hard, and practiced. I guess I did practice a lot. Gee, maybe you're... Ah, it's him! Oh, my! It is a minion of evil! Oh, man! Tell him I'm not home! I've joined the circus or something! Don't worry, Ronnie. I'm not gonna let anyone take away my dear brother's soul. We'll switch places. My purity and goodness will cause the Prince of Darkness to run like a scalded cat. Now go to my room and pretend to be asleep while I give this nasty old demon a piece of my mind. Sis? Yes, Rodney? You're the best. Hello, I'm Rodney. Can I help you? I've come to collect what is rightfully mine. <laughs> come on in and wipe your brimstone all over the carpet. I shouldn't have been so jealous of Matilda. She's always been so nice to me. 
She's even willing to sacrifice her soul. No, I can't let her do it. I'm gonna take what's coming to me or... or give what's owed. Huh? What gives? Isn't it kind of late to be selling apples, little ranger? You must come with me as agreed in the contract, signed in your own blood. I didn't sign any contract. That's what they all say. Matilda Patella? But I'm Rodney. She's Matilda. Nice try, Matilda. Think you're clever pretending to be me? Nobody outwits the dark side. That's right. You're coming with me, Matilda Patella. I've only seen you all switch places with a lookalike trick a few thousand times. You sold your soul for... Polka? But why? I was sick of practicing all the time. It was such a drag. Practice, practice. Boring. So I decided to take a little shortcut. I traced the license plate of the limo that was tailing it. It belonged to some lawyer. A lawyer? Seems Blind Louie's in a bit of legal trouble, but your soul is free and clear. I don't know. I still have this funny feeling I'm being followed. Louie? Who else but a musician would be creeping around this time of night? <laughs> yeah, thanks for keeping my axe warm for me, boy. I had to blow town till things cooled down a little. Cooled down from what? Well, one of these days, when you're ready, I'll teach you a little tune called My Third Ex-Wife Blues. So that must have been her lawyer in the limo. But what about the initials on your guitar? B-L-Z-B. Yeah. Where'd you get such a cool axe? Now, that's a long story, boys. You see, I won it from an old blues man named Big Lonnie Zabone in a card game. I changed my name to fit his initials, you see. Yeah, that man could play like nobody's business. A funny story about Big Lonnie. Folks say he sold his soul at the crossroads. Ever notice what we call music? Our parents call noise? That's what's known as the musical generation gap, and it's existed since the dawn of time. Mission accomplished. It's a never-ending evolutionary cycle, not to mention an important part of messing with your parents' heads. Of course, they seem to forget how their music freaked out your grandparents, whose music freaked out your great-grandparents. But it's getting harder to get that real shock value these days. Some parents will even listen to your music so they can relate to you better. What's up with that? If you really want to freak them out, turn your stereo up to 11 and crank up the Mozart. According to the ancient legend, the land was in the grip of a terrible drought. Then, on the 13th day of the 13th month of his vicious dry spell, a baby boy was born. They say his cries touched the heart of the rain gods. And at last, they smiled down on the land. In honor of his bringing such good fortune, the boy's father named him Brings Us Luck. As the boy grew, so did his reputation. Many times he located the great bison herds that fed and clothed his people. If danger was near, Brings Us Luck was sure to find it first. And so the others were kept safe from harm. His people never worried about another drought. For they say he could summon the rains at will. However, his real story is even more fascinating than the legend that grew up around him. For the truth is, 
The reason brings us luck brought such good fortune to his tribe is that he was <laughs> What's this? Friendly wolves come to form an unlikely alliance with a human? <laughs> what an extraordinary... They say luck is a fickle mistress, meaning you never know if it'll be the good kind or the bad. Uh, Unless you're Alonzo Long Night, that is. Take cover! Town Jinx coming through! Oh, poor guy. Being the Town Jinx must be a lonely existence. Can you blame anybody? That dude's been hit by lightning five times! And two of those times, he was indoors. Hey, what do we have here? Hmm. I've heard of Indian head nickels, but never a penny. You know what they say, Mimi. Find a penny, pick it up. And all the day you'll have good luck. You don't really believe in that superstitious stuff, do you? Come back with that! Yo! I thought you weren't buying that good luck business. Forget luck. That penny was ancient. It's probably worth something. Huh? Wow! 20 bucks? What are the chances? Share the wealth, Mimi. Let me give this baby a whirl. Wicked! Booyah! Top score! I rule! This is one lucky, lucky penny. Oh, please. You are bound to crack sumo hockey sooner or later. You've been playing it for months. Mm. Sweet, sweet penny. Of course you realize these games are all part of an elaborate government plot to train future pilots to fly downed alien spacecraft. But nevertheless... Kudos, Hitch! <laughs> won the Jitters Cola Contest. Hey, you're not claiming any prize till you pay up, pal. <coughs> <coughs> I said a buck. This is only 99 cents. Aw, oh, man, that's all I have on me. <coughs> huh? Ha! You call almost choking to death lucky? Well, you saved me, didn't you, little Miss Heimlicker? <laughs> and I thought these things were rigged. Excuse me, young man. Could I get some change for the gumball machine? I've been after the elusive great white gumball since I was young enough to have my own teeth to chew it with. <laughs> well, here goes nothing. I hit the jackpot! Wahoo! Hey! Oh. Hey! My aching back don't ache no more! <laughs> Hey! 
I don't know about you, but I'm definitely sensing a pattern here. In 1813, a special penny was minted to commemorate the legend of Brings Us Luck, a guy who was revered for bringing good fortune to others. But get this, moments after the very first penny was pressed, the mint burned to the ground during a freak electrical storm. Toasted by lightning while making a lucky penny. I love the irony. That penny's one of a kind. And it's loaded with good luck mojo. Milo's not here. Actually, uh, we heard about that perfect game you bowled yesterday. You the man, Mr. Krasinski. The Bolinator, king of the lanes. Well, thanks, kids. I think it has something to do with my lucky shirt. I haven't taken it off since. Whoa! I mean, gee, who'd have guessed? Anyway, while we're here, I don't suppose you'd have change for a dollar by any chance. Well, sure I do. At least I thought I did. Well, that's strange. A pocketful of change can't just up and walk away, can it? And then... After single-handedly fighting off the band of marauding hunts, I made them hand over all the change they swiped from my dad's pocket. Oh, why are you so interested in some grubby old penny anyway? Oh, no reason. Now hand it over! Hey! No! Lucky or not, it looks like that penny is gone for good. I bet that's exactly what they said when the mint burned down. It looks like our prediction of sunny skies was a little off the mark. Some clouds are moving in, but they should blow over quickly. Okay. If you guys aren't up for scuba diving, maybe we can convince the city to drain the sewers. Woohoo! I'm on pace to top my high score! Hoo! Hee! Ah! Ah! No way! I just erased my high score! Uh, uh, get what stinks? Uh. Hey, Lonzo. Been down in the sewer lately? Fell through an open manhole. Second time this week. Nose plugs are on me, guys. I still got that 20 bucks. Hey, it's gone! Thanks. Ow! Hey, no maggots. I didn't know they made them without maggots. Interesting. Very interesting. Well, it seems those gray skies are here to stay, along with occasional rain showers. Hey, Alonzo, did you find anything interesting down in the sewer today? Disgusting, yes. Interesting, no. Are you sure about that? Why don't you have a look? Huh? Where'd this come from? I'd take good care of that if I were you. It's lucky. Yeah, right. I wish. Hey, if anyone deserves a lucky break for a change, it's a town jinx, right? My new perm! This gum has been nothing but a curse! Hey, oh! oh, my aching back is back. <laughs> Whoa, mega hiccups. I had them ever since I drank that, that, that prize winning can of 
Jitter, 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 cola. And to top it off, I answered the skill testing question wrong, so I didn't even win anything. What a, what a scam. Nothing but seven ten splits all night. This definitely calls for some more in-depth research. Okay, according to the Historical Society archives, this is the only written account of Brings Us Luck, the diary of Corporal Woodrow Wallace. It seems he lived amongst the natives and learned as much as he could of their ways and customs. Hey, I'm liking this guy. So did the local wildlife. His tribal nickname was Gets Eaten by Wolves. Harsh. The legend of Brings Us Luck was his final entry. I wish, I wish, uh, what's the use? I should know better than to believe in something like... Hey, a lucky penny! Being a jinx are finally over. Get this. Brings us luck was born during a freak lightning storm. The rains brought an end to a year-long drought. That same night, his father's teepee was totaled by lightning. Sure, he always found a great bison herd. But he always got trampled in the bargain. He was a total jinx. Whoa, the dude was a total disaster magnet. Which is exactly why they revered him. Cause as long as he was soaking up all that bad luck mojo, the rest of the village was sitting pretty. Guess that explains why they named him Brings Us Luck and not Brings Himself Luck or you know, guy who gets all the lucky breaks, or Mr. Lucky Pants, all right. or... All right, we get the idea. But how can the penny be so lucky if the guy was a jinx? I think the spirit of Brings Us Luck finally decided to keep some good luck for himself. The question is, now that we've lost our own town jinx, what does that mean for the rest of us? Nature loves balance, right? Even when it comes to luck, sooner or later, something's gotta give. But until then, keep your head down. Whoa! It's been a week since Alonzo stopped being a jinx and half the town's in the casualty war. Hey! I'm headed underground till this bad luck blows over! Now for a weather update. A severe storm warning is now in effect. This will make the perfect storm look like a D minus. A once in a millennium weather system is converging on Ouija Falls! <laughs> Ah! 
Whoa! We need our jinx back. We need to talk about that lucky penny. And so, ever since you got that penny, it seems things have gotten a little out of whack. Cool. You can see the whole town from here. Well, I'll take a good look. It won't be there much longer. Unless I go back to being the town jinx, right? You'll be a hero. If my balance of luck theory holds, that is. Even when I'm lucky, I'm jinxed. Uh... I wish... I was right. Amazing. Bummer. It's gonna be impossible to find that penny in here. I'm a hero. Yeah! Killer bees! Whoa! Take cover, Mo! Actually, I don't think we need to worry. Yeah, he's a hero, but he's still a total jinx. And now, the long-range forecast. It looks like nothing but sunny skies for the next two weeks. Thanks, buddy. Way to go, Jinx! Way to go, Jinx! It's nice to see Alonzo being appreciated for a change. Even if it is from a distance. Too bad about losing that lucky penny, though. It's gone for good this time. <sighs> I wouldn't be too sure, Hitch. It might turn up somewhere. I mean, stranger things have happened, right? Hey, did I ever tell you guys the legend of the six-legged buffalo? Now this one is really weird. If you ask me, good luck charms are way overrated. Take the four-leaf clover. Great if you can actually find one, but trust me, you're more likely to wind up with a nasty case of poison ivy. Inhabit that time-honored classic, the horseshoe. Well, horses wear them all the time, right? Ever heard of the horse winning the lottery? Or those lucky socks. You know, the ones you wore when you hit that game-winning home run three years ago and haven't cleaned since in case that luck washes off? Well, lucky isn't the word I'd use to describe the rest of your team. All I'm saying is, don't count on your lucky rabbit's foot too much, because maybe it's not nearly as lucky as advertised. And if you don't believe me, just ask him. Scientists claim time is constant. 24 hours in every day, 60 minutes in each hour. Each one exactly like the next, exactly like the next, exactly like the next. We all know that's not true, right? Because sometimes the minutes fly by like seconds. And other times, they drag on like hours. He is so doomed. Hey guys. You're late. 43 minutes, 20 seconds to be exact. What's with Mimi? She get a lousy mark on the math test or something? I guess she thinks it'd be nice if you were on time. You know, maybe just once in your life? Huh. Must be a girl thing. <gasps> ah! Do you ever know what time it is? Of course I do. It's time to assume my rightful place as Lone Pine High Handball Champion! May I remind you, I have whipped your butt the last 14 games in a row? That's cool. We'll make it double or nothing. They've all been double or nothing. By my calculations, this is actually 16,384 or nothing. 
Hey, are we playing handball or doing math homework? Your serve, Hotshot. Okay, here are the rules. No bus stops, gravities, lifties, invisible mimes, dancing dinosaurs, flaming nuns, green belugas, crazy monkeys, or purple gravies. Got it? Whatever. You're going down. Now quit stalling. <laughs> Woohoo! Ha! Ooh. Ooh. Hey, wasn't that a dancing dinosaur? I'd say the landing was more like a crazy monkey. I think I broke something. You totaled your watch. Actually, I totaled your watch. Huh? You loaned it to me, remember? You said I should look at it once in a while. <laughs> oh, yeah. No probs, Mo. I'll get you a new one. Don't tell me you've got money. Who needs money? The hitchster knows where to get the good stuff for free, baby. What about the game? Be back in a minute. You know he means a hitch minute, right? Ugh, I should have brought a book. Nothing beats the lost and found when you're shopping on a tight budget. Hey, Mr. Security Dude. I lost my, uh, whatchamacallit here yesterday. Cool. Got one. Ooh, la la. Aha! Way old, kinda grungy looking. Mo's gonna love it! Hmm, it's running a little fast. Your serve, hotshot. Okay, here are the rules. No bus stops, gravities, lifties, invisible mimes, dancing dinosaurs, flaming nuns, green belugas, crazy monkeys, or purple gravies. Got it? Whatever. You're going down. Now quit stalling. Whoa. I just had a major case of deja vu. I swear we've done this before. Probably because we have. I've only beat him like 14 times already. Are we yakking or playing? Hey, where'd you get the watch? You lent it to me, remember? No. That's not my watch. Weird. I was sure I got it from you. No wonder you're always late. It's running slow. No probs. We'll synchronize watches. Aha! Way old. Kind of grungy looking. Moe's going to love it. Hmm. It's running a little fast. OK, here are the rules. No bus stops, gravities, lifties, invisible mimes, dancing dinosaurs, flaming nuns, green belugas, crazy, crazy monkeys, monkeys, or purple, purple gravies. Got, got it? Whatever. Whatever. You're, You're going, going down. down. Now quit. Now quit. Stalling? Stalling? Then I say, whoa, I just had a major case of deja vu. And you say, probably, probably because, because we, have. we have. Then Hitch says, are we are yakking, yakking or, playing? or playing? Wow, deja vu. Correction, this is deja, deja vu. It's like we've done this before, twice. I was afraid of this. We're becoming way too predictable. Okay, let's try to remember what happened next, the last time. Hey, where'd you get the cool watch? Very retro. That's it. No wonder you're always late. It's running slow. No probs, well, wait. Let's try an experiment. This doesn't involve any more roadkill squirrels in a car battery, does it? I mean with the watch. Set it back about 10 seconds. Okay, but... I mean with the watch. Set it back about 10 seconds. Okay, but... I mean with the watch. Set it back about 10 seconds. Okay, but... Okay. Whoa. I've made my point. This watch is some sort of time machine. No way. <laughs> Sweet. But where did it come from? I don't know. I seem to remember something about going to the Ouija Mall Lost and Found. Or at least, that's where I'm gonna go. Or went before. Who would lose a time machine? That's not something you want in the wrong hands. Too late. This is like handing a chimp a flamethrower. Yeah, I've always wanted to try that one too. Whoa! -hoo! 
Time is totally frustrating. Ever notice how you never have just the right amount? Either there's never enough, or way, way too much. A times B divided by C will always be equal to the root of D, except when D has already been divided by B squared and added to the sum of all the other letters in the alphabet. Q is always subtracted from U, and sometimes Y, unless Y equals the root of Q squared. Ugh, math is brutal enough when it's numbers. What a waste of time. Tommy Hitchcock Time Lord to the rescue! Huh? Whoa! He fast forwarded us through math class. <laughs> and history and geography. <laughs> was that sweet or was that sweet? With this baby, we can skip over all the boring parts and finish high school in no time! But we won't learn anything. Exactly! Only this way we won't learn it faster. See the beauty? Some of us would like to go to college, you know. No probs. I can swing that. Um, Hitch, don't you think maybe you should use that thing a little more responsibly? Oh, yeah. Sure. I'm cool. Call me Mr. Responsible Time Lord from now on. Great. So are we still on for the movie tonight? 7.15 show, right? Right. Careful, Hitch. Huh? Uh, what? I guess one person's responsible is another's reckless. Stand back, Sharon! The Monkey Man army is attacking! <laughs> Sharon, be strong! And... And Sharon, if this doesn't work out for the better... Well, I... I love... I love... I know, Bob. I know. This is the worst film I have ever seen. That's the Monkey Man army? Bogus! Looks like a bunch of guys in furry pajamas. Okay, let's get out of here. I meant we could just walk out. It makes a statement. Yeah. But my way has more style. Hey, what time is it? Seven. So we haven't gone to the movie yet? Yeah. Sweet or what? We haven't paid. It's like having a perpetual money-back guarantee. But you still have the Mondo Cola. Bonus. Cola from the future. See ya. Guess it came back with Hitch because he was holding it. Wish I could say the same about his sanity. This is like winning a lottery, only better. Because if I do win the lottery, I can win it over and over and over again. <laughs> Woohoo! Oops. To make happy <laughs> is her. I mean, Zabo. Oh, Mr. Gazerski, sir. A thousand pardons, oh malevolent one. I uh thought you looked uh thirsty. <laughs> Here's hoping by 10 o'clock tonight I'm home and chilling. Whew. Huh? What the? We have to do something. This is our time too and he's wasting it. Yeah, and I'm getting a funny feeling again. Deja vu? Actually, this one is more like impending doom. It's not like Hitch to be in a hurry to get to school. Hey, guys. It's a beautiful gizzard-free morning, isn't it? That explains it. I was gonna cram for the chemistry test last night, but thanks to you, there wasn't any last night. Hey, if you can't stand the time travel, then stay out of the kitchen. Or, come on. What's the point of having a time machine if you never use it? I know, Hitch, but the thing is pretty serious. 
And technically, it's not really yours. Uh, what about Finder's Keepers? You're right, Mo. We should try to find oh. its rightful owner. Yeah, I'd love to meet him. Man, when did you guys become such buzzkills? Seems to me you were a lot more fun-loving yesterday. <laughs> to make half <hell> creep! <laughs> Oh, talk about bad timing. Yeah, it'd be great to have your own time machine. Of course, it's not so great when someone else has one. Yo, whoa, kill Hitchcock! Wait, where should I go? Yeah, you know where you're going, and I'm gonna send you there. Ooh, Nelly! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if he doesn't knock it off, I'm gonna lose my lunch. Would that be yesterday's lunch or tomorrow's? Hey, moron! Say goodbye to your pal! Wait, wait! Look! Cheerleaders! Sometimes the old fashioned ways work best! Smell you later, Giz! Oh! Bird! Now that was definitely a crazy monkey. Oh, I think I broke something. That's nothing compared to what's gonna happen to you! Ah! Oh, no. Uh, Hitch, wait, it's... He can disappear, but he can't hide! How come we're still here? I thought the watch controlled all of time. The watch is short-circuiting. Maybe it's only affecting Hitch. Oh, brother. I'm not so sure I like the idea of Hitch time-traveling unsupervised. I hear you, Mimi, but I like the alternative even less. Whoa! When am I? Huh. Must be a snow day. Brrr. Where's the thermostat? You really think this'll work? It's our only shot. Whoever lost that time watch has to be looking for it. If we give them a clue, Maybe they can find it and hitch. Whoa! Whoa! This plaque marks the spot where the Lone Pine Schoolhouse used to stand before it was destroyed by the mysterious fire of 1848. Whoa! Now I know why they invented central heating. Let her head for home before I freeze solid. Come on! Take me home, ya! Whoa! Ouija Falls, 10 million years B.C. Nice landscaping. Uh, achoo! Oops! Excuse me. Ugh. So much for hoping he doesn't do anything stupid. I said, excuse me! Man, oh man! I gotta get this thing working before... Oh... Hey, buddy! Oh, oh, for a second there, I thought you were Gizzard. I mean, <laughs> there is a remarkable family resemblance, and not to mention the B.O., but... You have a way more intelligent expression on your face. Uh, Youch! Easy! Buddy, this isn't a petting zoo. You should try evolving uh, some manners to go with those opposable thumbs, dude. Oh, no. You can't have that. How about a nice uh, pair of shoes instead? Mm -hmm. oh. Well, don't say I 
didn't warn you. No! Oh, I give up. <sighs> I'm stuck here forever. Yes? Ah, so it is you. Thought I noticed a resemblance. I've been looking for you through eons, you know. Who are you? Now then, I've come to claim my watch. That was your watch? Oh, uh, well, I, uh, I, you see... Speak up, speak up. I haven't got all century. I have a ten o'clock tea off. Do you have the watch or not? Yes, and, uh, no. Uh, is it too late to say sorry? Well, I suppose we both should have taken better care of it. I was trying on these new golf pants and left it behind in the change room. Can you fix it? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I'm a timekeeper, not a watchmaker. Now, now, my boy. No need to fret. What's past is past. Or what's future is past. Or, or the past present is future. <laughs> Even I get confused. Anyway, we'll just have to use the new fangled model. Hold on, I'm still getting the hang of it. The instructions were written in Japanese. Here we are. Well, tea off time waits for no one. Oh. <laughs> Hitch? This is so totally freaky. I don't believe my eyes. What? I got something on me? What? No. It's just that you're early. Definitely one for the record books. <laughs> <laughs> Are we working on our comedy routines or playing? It's time to assume my rightful place as Lone Pine High Handball Champion. May I remind you, I have whipped your butt the last 14 games in a row. That's cool. We'll make it double or nothing. They've all been double or nothing. Yeah, I've got that funny feeling too. It's like deja vu all over again. Oh, hey, Mo, here's your watch back. I got a funny feeling you should take it back before something happens to it. Five thousand years ago, we kept track of time by watching the passing shadows. Which was alright, as long as the sun was shining. The hourglass helped, as long as you woke up every hour to flip it over. I'm sure a lot of kids were late to school in those days. Gradually, we progressed from keeping track of hours to minutes, then seconds. The funny thing is, the more we divide time up, the faster it seems to move. And now people long for the good old days when time passed by more slowly. You gotta wonder, was all this so-called progress really necessary? I mean, when it comes to time, all we really need to know is, when's math class over? Life is full of interesting little twists and surprises. It's amazing what you'll see if you keep your eyes peeled. And never forget, things aren't always what they seem. Whoa, check it out. Yeah, amazing what they can do with cement these days, isn't it? Good morning, Mosley. Morning, Ms. Tingle. I was checking out the new... additions? <laughs> you, you, boo. <laughs> Beautiful, isn't he? Eat up now so you'll grow big and 
strong. Hmm. Gravel. Makes sense. What else would you feed a cement deer? Oh, and here you go, dear. Some chocolate chip cookies for the walk to school. That's great. Thanks. What do you figure? Not sure. Maybe it's a new dance craze. Or maybe a lice infestation. I don't have lice. All right, I've been robbed. Of what, your sanity? No, something way more precious. My yo-yo. Oh, brother. You just misplaced it. No way. I put it in my pocket last night. Somebody lifted it. You're sure it was in your pocket? Sure, I'm sure. I was tossing and turning all night. Yo-yos are pretty hard and lumpy, you know. You sleep with your clothes on? Saves time getting dressed in the morning. Hey, where is it? Who knows? That yo-yo thief has probably moved on to the next town by now. Forget your stupid yo-yo, you yo-yo. Where's my lucky pen? Maybe you misplaced it. Hmm? I do not lose things. Obviously, somebody stole it. Hey, the end game has begun. My pencil case has been snatched. Bye, Bye aliens. aliens. It really steams me to think there's a yo-yo thief among us. You mean lucky pen thief. Keep your eyes peeled, guys. Maybe you drop the stuff on the way to school. Wise up, Mo. This is obviously the work of a global military industrial cabal working in tandem with extraterrestrial invasion forces in a bid to undermine our faith in national security. They need my erasers. Tell no one. Let's check in at Lizzie's. Melvin is missing? Yes, I've looked and looked. But I can't find him anywhere. I think he's been stolen. Who's Melvin? Her cat? Lizzie's favorite shrunken head. Strange. No kidding. She has favorites? We all misplace things once in a while, right? Stuff just seems to disappear. Uh, Mosley, have you seen my rolling pin? Ugh. Did someone borrow my senior styling gel? I look like a sheepdog. Are you sure you haven't misplaced it, Mother? Positive. I always keep it right on my dresser. Could it all be just a huge coincidence? No way! It was right here! Somebody took my I saw Bigfoot keychain. Okay, now it's personal. And then I looked, and it was gone. Strange. <laughs> I'll say. This has got to be the lamest crime spree in history. It's all worthless junk. Except to the person it was stolen from, that is. Whoever's doing this isn't going to get rich. I mean, where could they fence Mr. Bludge's dentures, huh? Or Helga Bumford's nose ring? Come on. Hmm. I'd say we're looking for someone who's seriously bent. Maybe even criminally insane. You mean a teacher? It could be anyone. Right. Anyone who's a total weirdo. Which, in this town, is a pretty long list. And Ms. Tingle is weirdo numero uno. Careful, Hitch. Mr. Greentoes isn't a fire hydrant, you know. Oh, yeah? Tell that to all the dogs and pigeons. Yuck! I gotta wash my hands. Hey, what's this? A pillowcase. What? <gasps> my yo-yo! Mimi's pen. Oh! Your keychain? the missing loot and check it out the swag bag is monogrammed hmm mt but it can't be not ms, ms. Tingle. tingle
They say when something is too good to be true, it usually isn't. So the same rule should apply when something's too terrible to be true, right? <gasps> Hide! Oh no! Who's there? Uh. <laughs> Mosley, what are you doing out so late? <laughs> and you've brought your odd little friend, Butch. I'm odd? Hey, and it's Hitch. Let's get out of here. We'll call in the SWAT team for the takedown. Relax, Miss Tingle isn't the thief. Being nutty is one thing. <laughs> Being a nutty crook is a whole nother nutty ball game. I'm sure there's a rational explanation. Let me talk to her. Rational explanation? Whew, he's been watching way too much television. Huh? Oh man. Miss Tingle, is this yours? Oh, why, yes, it is. Well, where did you find it? Right here. Um, I want to talk about the stuff inside it. Oh, now where do you suppose all those trinkets came from? Well, someone has been taking things without permission. Oh, dear. I'm afraid I, I don't know quite what to say. That makes two of us. Oh, now, now, don't you worry. Your little secret is safe with me. My little secret? Now, if you return all these things you've taken, I won't say a word. But promise me you will never, ever do something like this again. I didn't steal them. We'll deal with your denial issues after you put everything back. <laughs> She's got a lot of nerve trying to pin her crime wave on my best bud. Uh, you didn't do it, right? That must be one big honking squirrel. <laughs> Talk about a lawsuit waiting to happen. Don't the park guys know these things are too heavy to install in trees? This birdbath came from Miss Tingle's front lawn. Hey, where's the pillowcase? <gasps> Duck! Don't you mean flamingo? <laughs> All right, Miss Tingle. Come on out and fight like a crazy old lady! Quit fooling around. The birdbath proves it's not Ms. Tingle. But she might be in danger. The birdbath proves it's not her. Hitch, she's 80 years old. There's no way she could climb that tree, let alone lift the heavy cement birdbath. It's obviously a frame-up. Aha! These footprints were... Back so soon? Look who I found in the backyard. If I didn't know any better, I'd say someone was trying to steal him. <gasps> Not my bird bath, too. Mosley, didn't we have a little talk about taking things? <clears throat> Hitch. <laughs> uh, this is part of some strange initiation ritual, isn't it? Really, boys, is a life of crime worth admittance to a silly fraternity? Someone who's been giving a guy chocolate chip cookies ever since he was in first grade does not go around trying to murder him. Dude, the loot was at her place. So were the attempted murder weapons. She's strong as an ox, and she's as baddie as a Tennessee cavern. Yeah, but we can't let cold hard facts get in the way of instinct. Oh, bro. Hey, when did the school get a gargoyle? <gasps> Duck. No, no, it's definitely a gargoyle. Whoa! There goes our thief. After him. It's 
not even bath night. I don't like where this is leading. You mean a horrible, embarrassing death by lawn art? No, I mean right back to Miss Tingle's place. Hitch, you notice anything weird? You're kidding, right? All the garden gnomes are missing. Sheesh, she's getting weirder by the second. How is she stealing her own garden gnomes? Doc! <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> <laughs> How come whenever you say that, I end up spending the night in the emergency ward? Come on. Yeah! I hate to say it, but the suspense is killing me. And I hate to say this even more. It looks like Miss Tingle might be trying to kill me too. Out of control. It's like my dad and his salt shaker collection. Mom made him build more shelves in the basement to store them all. Hey, this one is from my yard. And check out what he's holding. And there's my yo-yo. Let me guess. This one's your dad's. Every garden gnome in town is down here. And they've each got one of the stolen items. Interesting. Not to mention creepy. <sighs> Bonus. Confound those meddling humans. I've wasted precious time. He's alive! Shh! Gnomes of old, stealers of gold. Come back to life. Come back from the cold. Where are we? Where am I? <laughs> What's going on? I'm vanished. My back is killing me. Watch it. Get off my toe. Welcome back, my brothers. Thanks to me, the spell you have been under these many years has finally been broken. <laughs> now then, return the items you will find in your hands to me. According to the ancient book of spells, they must stay in my possession until midnight. Are these great seats or what? Bumblepuss! Dumpling butt! Get down here. Who are you calling dumpling butt, you walk and talk and fire hydrant? Actually, he was calling him dumpling butt. Oops. Cancel that fire hydrant craft gate. So you're the one who's been stealing things all over town. Don't forget trying to kill us. Oh, I won't forget. In fact, I shall savor it. These trinkets were needed for the transference spell. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, what? A transference spell will transfer the gnome's curse onto the owner of these possessions. You always were annoyingly clever. It will be a pleasure turning you both into fire hydrants. Forget these puny humans. Where's the jewels? We, um, didn't get them? What? We didn't! Why not? It was a cinch! Well, what happened then? I don't know! Last I remember, we was in Witch Grundigal's castle. It was going along smooth as silk. Like picking rubies from a baby. <laughs> And then, next thing I know, we're here, holding a bag full of nothing. That was 500 years ago, Hurlstone. 500 years you've been frozen in stone by the spell of Grundigal. And I have set you free. Congratulations, Green Toes. Very impressive. And just think, it only took him 500 years. 500 years spent posing as a phony garden ornament. 
Five hundred years in the rain and sleet and snow. And don't even get me started about dogs and pigeons. So, while we've been frozen in stone for the last five centuries, you've spent all that time standing around picking your nose! <laughs> Still, it's a good thing at least one of you managed to avoid Witch Grundigal's spell. Boy, was that lucky. Or what? It's all coming back to me now. You were the lookout! Did you fall asleep, you lazy fool? Huh? No, no, no! I tried to warn you! I fought like a wounded troll, I did, but she tied me up and... and... Uh, I twisted my ankle! Ow, 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 see? It's still tender! They're getting away! Come on, what took you? Gnomes away! Why do we always end up hiding out in the graveyard? You never know when an open grave will come in handy. Sweet idea, Mo. They'll never think of looking for us here. Good thing Ms. Tingle didn't have a chainsaw. A ladder, you fools! Make a ladder! Well, that'll take him a while, won't it? Nope. Give me the bag. Yeah! It's a long way to the ground, Whoa. humans. But it isn't very long to midnight. No! Well, that ought to take care of him for another hundred years or so. Except for Green Toes. He must have stayed in the cave. Unless we stop him, he can do this all again. Yeah! <laughs> Bingo. made of cement. Well, of course he is. He's a garden gnome, dear. That's what they're made of. Cement. <laughs> Good night, Auntie Grundigal. Auntie? <gasps> Grundigal? Yes. She's my great, 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 great aunt. She just stopped by for a surprise visit. <laughs> She's a bit odd, you know. <laughs> We all love a good unsolved mystery, right? And apparently, so did a lot of ancient civilizations, because they sure left a lot of them behind. Like Stonehenge, the pyramids, and most mysterious of all, the statues of Easter Island. Anyway, I think I have the why part figured out. It has to do with one of humankind's most primal urges, a strange impulse we still haven't overcome. What we're looking at here is a prehistoric example of lawn art. Yeah, civilizations come and go, but tacky is forever. Human beings haven't been on this planet for all that long. I mean, it's surprising what we've accomplished in a relatively short time. Not to mention frightening. school bus. Is there any better example of the decline of humanity? Yeah, Timothy Upchuck. I'm walking. 
Walking's good. I'd suggest begging a ride on the kindergarten bus, but I still have an all-day sucker stuck in my hair from yesterday. Guys, blow up. I need something to lock this down. Speaking of the decline of humanity... Ah... The Big Mama Super Gulp Cola. One of the four essential food groups. <gasps> Remind me again why we're friends? Because I challenge you intellectually. Anybody want a bite of my breakfast fruit pie thingy? Pass. No thanks. Looks like this is a two-hand operation. Tastes like cardboard. Oh, wait. Missed one. Man, doesn't anyone ever pick up the garbage around here? The problem is, we're making it faster than we can collect it. No kidding. Just look at all this packaging for one cereal bar. We should boycott Burger Genie until they agree to reduce the amount of garbage they produce. A boycott? That's harsh. I'm with Mimi. It's getting pretty bad when even the rats are gagging. All I'm saying is before we go all crazy, let's carefully consider all aspects of the situation, okay? Such as? Well, there's seven-story Sloppy Joe Bacon Burgers, French fries smothered in melted cheese curd and gravy, double-decker deep-fried pan-dripping sandwiches. Oh, yeah! Exactly what I was gonna say. Oh, man. Can we boycott dogs instead? I don't think any dog left that. It's green. Maybe it was a vegetarian. Hmm. Huh. Whatever it is, it's disgusting and another example of what total slobs were becoming. Better hustle. One more late slip and we're in for detention. like my shoe goo. Ah! It looks like a scene from a horror movie. Yeah, pretty cool, isn't it? Be some kind of toxic mold? Could be the work of a poltergeist. They love stringing ectoplasm all over the place. Ah. Looks like Mrs. Rizzo isn't the only one having a close encounter of the goo kind. What's the close-up angle telling us, Mimi? Well, it's definitely green. Don't forget Sticky. Ew. And Freaky! Your attention, please. School will be closed until the strange occurrences can be explained. Sweet. This is better than a snow day. Uh... Why don't we study at my place? Arr, run for your lives! Whoa, good call on the bus ride. I can't wait to see what else is going on around town. <laughs> huh? It seems nothing can keep this mysterious green goo at bay. Ouija Falls has come to a screeching halt. The entire town held hostage at the mercy of a green goo plague. This is even better than I thought. 
Don't you mean worse? Okay. So this weird green goo is taking over the town. Is that any reason to panic? Now for a news update. This just in. <laughs> We're all gonna die. <laughs> ah! That's the problem with news today. Sheer sensationalism. Hey, those little birds are chowing it down like crazy. They eat worms, too. Are you gonna trust their palate? Hey, guys, check out the pool. No way! It... it's clean! That pool hasn't been swimmable since 1978. Whoa, but I swam here last week. Hey, you think that's where I got this rash? Please, spare me the visuals. Hitch, lift your shoe. Okay, now the other one. The one you stepped in the goo with. Wild! And just think of all the stuff I've stepped in. I mean, these are deep treads. And our neighbors have a pair of St. Bernard's. You know what I'm saying? Whoa, hey. who's got us in the high beams? Is that what I think it is? It can't be! This dumpster was overflowing! Well, it's empty now, and... Hey, isn't that our bus? all the smoke and fumes. What happened to Timothy Upchuck's Upchuck? Goo happened, Mimi. To test my theory, we need the most foul, evil-smelling item in the history of human civilization. Okay, Hitch. Bring on your hockey bag. Ready, set... Ugh, I'm blinded! I told you to wear goggles! I... I can see! Oh. I can breathe! What is this stuff? It's a miracle! <sighs> it just might be the answer to what ails the planet. My house has never been so clean! Would you like to see the bathroom? This just in, goo is great! It makes lawns lush and green, removes those offensive pet odors. It even cuts through the heaviest grease and grime. to believe the whole town was in such a panic just this morning. Now everybody loves the stuff. Blind panic, love, two sides of the same coin, right? Oops. Did you see that? It seemed frightened. I don't blame it. This is diet cola. It's okay. You're safe here. After me! Get it away! It could be a giant flesh-eating bacteria, or a body snatcher. Maybe it's scanning my DNA, or reading my thoughts. That'll be a quick read. Yeah, hey, stop that! <laughs> oh, quit tickling! <laughs> Whoa! Are you okay? I think it cured my butt rash. Check it out! I'll take your word for it. It seems the more we find out about this stuff, the more questions it raises. And so far, no answers. 
maybe we can find some downtown. What's that weird smell? Fresh air. Interesting. <sighs> they're on the move. Maybe their work here is done. Ouija Falls couldn't possibly get any cleaner. Hey guys, check it out. Roll over, Blobby. Roll over, boy. Got a blob. Whoa. See that? up so fast, don't they? I think I'll keep them. Don't you want to know what this stuff is first? All I know is I'll never have to change my underwear again. He's already taken the stink out of my sneakers and my gym shorts. Want a treat? Huh, buddy? Do you? I wonder why Hitch's blob isn't following the others. It's like they're on a mission. Yeah, and that's just what scares me. Remember when I said there was no reason to panic? Now I'm working on a whole new theory. I think if this green goo really wants to clean up around here, it's only getting started. The blobs aren't leaving town after all. They're surrounding it. Sweet! This goo is the greatest thing since tube cheese. We'll have the cleanest town in the world with the goo protecting us. Protecting us or containing us? That's how they clean up toxic waste spills, right? Contain it so it doesn't spread, then clean it up. But they've already cleaned the whole town. I'm thinking that's only the first stage. And stage two would be? Contain and eliminate the source of all the mess. Us! Us! As far as the goo is concerned, human beings are nothing more than a toxic waste spill. Kind of humbling, isn't it? Is that the same as terrifying? It usually is when human beings are involved. Thank it for this just in. Goo is goo! When you think about it, the planet would be a lot better off without us. It's kind of hard to argue with what the goo is trying to accomplish. But I just can't shake this nagging obligation to the human race. On behalf of the rest of us, gee, thanks a bunch. shot. It's also our only shot. Hold it, Blobby. Hold it. Okay. Get it! When those other blobs merge with hitches, it stayed totally bonded to him. Must be my rugged good looks and engaging personality. Or because he never changes his underwear. Want it, boy? Do ya? Huh? Fetch!
Here, boy! Here, Blobby! Blobby! Come! Come here, fella! Oh, that's it! Come to Daddy, that's a boy! <gasps> Roll over! Oops. We'd better find a place with more room to romp. A boy in his blob. Very cute. Also extremely dangerous. We've got some tough decisions to make. Yeah, but first, we better make a pit stop at the Burger Genie. No way, okay? Do you guys even realize what you're asking me to do? He'll be good. Oh, what a good blobby. Who's daddy's little widow, Bobby Wobby, hmm? But you're the only one it listens to. We don't even know if this thing sleeps. You can't stay awake forever and... Um, Hitch, what's it doing? Relax. The Blobster just wants to make friends. Right, Blobby? Better call him off, Hitch. Ah! Heal, boy. Here, Blobby. Come. Blobby, no! Are you all right? Are you all right? So that's why you made us stop for a mega diet cola. It's the only thing I've seen that frightens it. Man, what is in this stuff? I'll keep him on a leash. A really big leash. Hitch, sooner or later, Blobby will want to finish what he started. It's instinct, the goo version of the call of the wild. We have to take action now before it's too late for everyone. Man, now I know just how the kid and old Yeller felt. Sit, Blobby. Now stay. He's not going to suffer, is he? They're sending out a water bomber filled with three tons of Diet Cola. This will be quick. That must be it. something? I sure hope not. If it figures out this is a trap, we're toast. It's sure coming in fast. Faster than any plane I've ever seen. And quieter, too. That's no water bomber. Ah! I bet it's not filled with Diet Cola. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Awesome! The goo is someone's pet! Whoa! A pet that cleans up after itself and we didn't have to destroy it. What a relief. Oh man, the water bomber. Bonus! <laughs> Everyone knows they should put garbage where it belongs, right? And when the garbage can is full, you know what to do with that too. Of course, back in the days when we lived off the land, we didn't need huge garbage dumps. What we didn't eat, we used for tools and clothing. Nothing went to waste. So where we get this idea that everything needs to be wrapped in paper, inside a cardboard box, and wrapped in plastic? And does anybody have any idea where we're gonna put it all? Maybe one day, visitors from some highly advanced civilization will show us the way to clean up our planet. But still, we should be careful. I mean, if we keep going like this, we might just give them the wrong impression. Mysteries and weird adventures are all around. You have to know where to look. And sometimes, you have to put your back into it. Shake a leg now, Mosley. 
We can't have anybody spotting us. They've been trying for years to figure out the secret ingredient I put in my cold potato soup. This would definitely raise a few eyebrows down at the ladies' auxiliary. Oh, there, there, there it is! Whoa, gnarly. The gnarlier the better. Haul it up so I can get a good look at it. Mm. Uh, Quit uh, playing with it, Mosley. We don't have all night. It uh, won't budge. Uh, Guess we'll have to lop its head off then. Ah. Uh, uh, That's a keeper. Ah, I love the smell of wild ginger root at midnight. Oh, now don't forget to cover our tracks. Aye, aye, Granny. Bonus. Come on, bada bada bada, swing bada. <laughs> All right, a triple. Mm. Say cheese. Ah, uh, Hitch. What are you trying to do, blind us? <laughs> it's one of those cool sticker cameras. See? Great. But give us a heads up next time, all right? So, uh, what kind of buried booty are we talking here? Gold? Silver? Jewels? Paper. And dirt. Paper? You mean paper money and dirt? Dirty money? Jackpot! Get a grip. It's just paper. Looks like some kind of scroll. F-O. Same as on the box. Must be the owner's initials. Felix Oscar. Fabrice Ondelay. Flannery O'Leary. Flannery O'Leary? Where'd you come up with a lame-o name like that? He signed it. Oh. It's a map. Sweet. Where's the X? X? What X? The X that marks the spot. Sorry, Hitcha. No X. Aw. Uh -huh. But then why would this O'Leary guy go to all the trouble of burying the map? Maybe they hadn't invented glove compartments yet. We just have to look closer. Hmm. <gasps> Gesundheit. But next time, try to sneeze away from the map. Okay. And next time, try to use a little less furniture polish. <sighs> I like the lemony freshness. Guys, it's not the room. I haven't cleaned it in ages. It's the map. In the old days, they used lemon juice as invisible ink. It dries clear, but when you hold it up to a heat source... You rock! Sweet! X marks the spot. Right in the deepest, darkest corner of Ouija Woods. Oh, not sweet. Who's up for a hike? I treasure treasure and buried loot as much as the next guy, but I have a real problem with this whole Ouija Woods thing. I've heard rumors about some strange stuff going down out here. Yeah, and the best part is, they aren't just rumors. Oh man. Huh? I did some checking on the net. Flannery O'Leary settled in Ouija Falls over 150 years ago. I downloaded a portrait. Looks like a real barrel of laughs. <laughs> yeah, totally paranoid. Seems he was always ranting about gold and treachery and dirty tricks. One day, he headed into Ouija Woods and was never seen or heard from again. Is this cool or what? You no, know I'm shivering. Hmm. Well, this is the spot. It's a dead end. Solid rock. There's no way there's treasure buried here. The map says, touch the face of the sun. Even if the sun was out, how could we touch it? Hmm. Hmm. Hey, Hitch, still got that camera? Yeah. We must have taken a wrong turn somewhere or... Ah! Sorry, Mimi. I'm hoping to shed a little light on our problem. Dude, you gotta work on your framing. A face. <gasps> 
This is too weird. Where'd it go? It's there, but it takes a bright light to show it. Like the flash or the sun. Touch the face of the sun. <sighs> there must be a hidden door or opening. Gross! I pulled out a nose hair. Yeah! Hey! <sighs> Awesome. Nice going, Hitch. We're in. The question is, if we go in, will we ever come out? There's only one way to find out. Finding a hidden cave is totally cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Let's find us some treasure. We'll split 50-50-50. Come on, guys. There's booty to bag. Hitch, we've got to proceed with caution. No probs. I've done a little caving in my day. Just step where I step. My cat-like reflexes and sure-footed cave savvy will... Oh! Awesome! Ladies first. Whoa! 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 Nice welcome, Matt. Ugh. Where's Hitch? There he is. He's okay. That depends on your interpretation of okay. Hitch! What's wrong? He's zenned out. Uh... Whoa! Will you look at this? Wow! Is this... Oz? Even better, it's a hidden valley, completely cut off from the rest of civilization. Guys, this place is... Enchanted. <laughs> An enchanted forest in Ouija Falls. Yeah, right. If this place is enchanted, where's all the wily elves and lucky charms and wee flittering fairies, huh? Huh? There's one right behind me, isn't there? Maybe she'll lead us to the treasure! Come back, Twinkle Bell! We don't want to steal your treasure! We just want to live off the interest! Tell me again why we keep him around. Think of it like lugging a canary into a coal mine. Hitch! Hitch, where are you? Hey! Hitch! Hitch! Guys! Over here! Like, Bruno! And watch out for the giant spider web. <laughs> now he tells us. No! We're gonna be giant spider food! I wish. This thing is man made. No! What was that? You don't know? I'm too young to be sacrificed! Who's up for a hike, he says. No! Uh, uh, oh. <laughs> oh, top of the morning. Oh, it is a roaring fine day. What you say? Thanks. Earl McGee is who I be, proprietor of all you see, keeper of this wee valley for long about, oh, 500 years now. You're 500 years old? What's your secret? Maybe he's immortal, like a vampire. Or a leprechaun? Ah, no. There's a clever lad. Sure, and it's true. <laughs> I'm a leprechaun through and through. Get out. <laughs> oh, you get out and put her there. Ah, no. <laughs> what kind of leprechaun would I be if I were to let you lay hands on me? 
<laughs> this guy cracks me up. Oh, tis a joy to have visitors after all these years. However, did you find the way? Oh, I don't know. Just lucky, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it isn't every night you go digging in the graveyard to find a treasure map. A map, you say? Uh, uh, oh, might I be taking a wee uh, boo at this map, friend Mo? Gia, uh, I don't know. Ah, <laughs> oh, come on, show him. It's not like we need to keep this place a secret from him, right? I mean, I think he already knows where this place is. <laughs> hey, hey, go easy there, Earl. We need that back in one piece. Oh, do you know? Well, that is a problem. <laughs> For I'll be needing it in a thousand pieces! Hey, what gives? He only helped us to throw us off. That map was a threat to him and everything he has. <laughs> Let this be a lesson to ya. <laughs> Never trust a leprechaun. Of course, it's not like I was completely honest myself. <gasps> hey, what do you mean there, boyo? Out with it now? Well, you know that map I gave you? It wasn't the map. Huh? It was a picture of an old friend of yours. Maybe you remember him. Flannery O'Leary. Flannery O'Leary? Oh! Curse his name and all who speak it! We really need to work on our little people skills. Fun. And games are over. Hand over that map, or suffer the same fate as its owner! Flannery O'Leary. <laughs> Catch a leprechaun, and he has to give you his pot of gold. Sounds simple, but as a get-rich-quick scheme, it's one of the riskiest. Just ask Flannery O'Leary. Earl! Buddy, old pal, we're friends, buds. No need to get all worked up over some old map, right? <laughs> Wrong, boyo. I can't have a map showing people the way to my little valley. You see, I value my privacy. Not to mention this pot of gold. Gold? There's gold? O'Leary wasted his life trying to get it, and Earl will stop at nothing to protect it. A leprechaun's pot of gold is the source of his magical powers. Such a clever lad you are. Tell me now, how is it you know so much about leprechauns? Supernaturalist field guide? Actually, Lippy the leprechaun learns to play nice. Granny used to read it to me when I was three. Oh, Lippy the leprechaun! A curse on that text and all its contributors! And the moralistic ending is so trite! Now then! Mm -mm. Give me the map, or you'll be putting down roots next to him. Him? Who are you talking about? All I see is an old tree trunk. Do you not have eyes in your head? Tis Flannery O'Leary! Who was? Flannery O'Leary! Flinno, who? This thieving, conniving, gold grubber is none other than Flannery O'Leary! And I believe you just said his name three times. <gasps> the jabbers! I've broken the spell! Oh, another tip from Lippy the Leprechaun. It's a gold mine. We go again, no live. But in the end, the gold will be mine. Oh, dream on, you old coot! Trap a 
have your own design, I see. Confound it! Come back here, McGee! <laughs> Can't we just make nice and give him the map? Huh? He said he'd let us go. You are such a slow learner. Never trust a leprechaun. Whoa! Come on! <clears throat> the tunnel! Where did it go? Ah, no. That's for me to know. And you never to find out. Playtime is over, girls and boyos. No! Mo! What do we do? I'm too smart for thee. You can't capture me. I'm Arrow McGee. You can't capture me. I'm Arrow McGee. <laughs> capture. That's it. <laughs> you can't capture me. I'm Arrow. Oh. Ah, 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 oh, my eyes. Oh, oh, sure. And what manner of trickery is this? I've captured a leprechaun. Ha. Don't be daft. You never laid a hand on me. Let this be a lesson to you. Never trust a kid. No! Tis cheating! Vanish! Face it, Earl. Without your pot of gold, you're powerless. Oh, oh no! Oh, this can't happen to me! Oh, I'm Earl McGee! Goodbye, Enchantment. Hello, Nightmare. <laughs> we have to run for it. Sweet! We're rich! A curse upon you and all your kin! Hit! Let's go! Ah. I've got you, Leprechaun. No, you unhand me, O'Leary! Oh, no. I've caught ye fair and square. Now, where's me gold? It's getting away, you dunderhead! <laughs> you won't trick me that easily. <laughs> Hitch, are you nuts? Drop the pot and get out of there! No! I can make it! Man, this is so not fair! <laughs> Woo! Talk about escaping by the skin of your teeth! Yeah, I wonder if we can say the same for Earl and O'Leary. You know, I could kill you for almost letting yourself get killed. Well, excuse me for trying to set us all up for life. At least we've still got the map. Smooth move, Mo. Looks like Earl had the map all along. Oh, man. There goes our shot at getting our hands on that gold. Maybe not all of it, but I did manage to bag us some souvenirs. <laughs> Whoa. Check it out. Hitch, if you weren't so grotty, I'd kiss you. Hey. What gives? What do you know? Ginger root. Okay, that really bites. Yeah. Oh well, at least Granny will be happy. You know, I'm almost gonna miss old Earl. Once you get past the evil and everything. You guys are so deranged. Every once in a while, we'd all really like to tell someone else where to go, right? I guess that's why we invented maps. Too bad they don't always lead to treasure. In fact, they kind of take all the excitement and mystery out of life. I mean, because of maps, we all know the world is round. But back when we thought the Earth was flat, things were way more exciting. Sailors thought they'd fall right off the edge of the world or be attacked by horrible sea monsters. Sometimes, after months at sea eating rancid food and drinking stale water, they saw mermaids. Whoa, so now that's even scarier than sea monsters. Yeah, when it comes to global travel, there's only one thing left that's still a total mystery. 
airline food. Thank you.